Sorry about that. Uh, first 15, 20 seconds, ain't nobody really in here. Sometimes even longer than that, so I'm just kind of talking to nobody. But uh, we're live tonight, and we're hanging out. And you should join me. Ask questions, talk about movies, pop culture, whatever we're talking about tonight. Kind of wherever the crowd, wherever the crowd comment take us, really. So, yeah. Still tinkering with the, uh... There we go, that's better. All right. Ah, see if anybody's gonna filter in here. Hey, we got one person in here. Make sure y'all hitting up the comments. Give me something to talk about. We're uh, live tonight. No Miss Cat, she's at work, that's why I'm live. She had to work over, so I'm sure she's listening to me on the other end. Uh, let's see here, YouTube. Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up. We got nobody in here. They done dipped out. All right. Sorry here. I'll try to bring up the comments. Not that it really matters. Nobody's in them yet. One person in the house tonight. Make sure you're uh, hitting the comments. So I can see what's going on. All right. Three people in here. Now some people are starting to filter in after a minute and a half of talking to myself. Uh, how y'all doing tonight? Me and my cousin Ray Ray are watching. All right. Haven't seen uh, Yamasta83 or his cousin Ray Ray. Ray Ray in the last few lives, so it's nice to see you guys back. What's my favorite smell? New leather in the car. I guess would be the best way to go without getting too, you know, risque. <laughs> uh, El Tenda, what's up, El Tenda? Good to see you, buddy. Just hanging out tonight, doing some Q&A. Uh, Ray Ray was in jail. I, I, I've been there. <laughs> I spent years. It happens. Four people in here making sure you, uh, you're you hitting the thumbs up, the like, the heart. Get some more people in here. Uh, just answering questions tonight, really. Just kind of hanging out, wasting time because Miss Cat had to work over and I don't know what to do with myself. So. <laughs> Does anybody watch that that movie? I, mean, I know we're late to the uh, we're late to the party, but that leave the world behind. Me and Miss Cat finally got to watching that the other day, and uh, it was yeah, it's about what I'd expect in that kind of situation. Uh, a lot of people out there believe that the, since the Obamas produced that, that that's that they're uh, you know trying to tell us something. So what do you what do you guys just take on that movie? Me and Cat liked the movie. Uh, it was okay for what it was. I would like to see what it, what it would have looked like inside of a city if the grid and stuff went down like that. So, um. all right, what we got in here? El Tenda says he keeps finding sealed VHS. Hey, if it, too bad they're not some horror sealed VHS. That's what you're after, right? Uh, allegedly, in Most eighty three says allegedly. All right, Jason Wilson. Uh, hey, hey, Snow. How are your day going? Hope it is well. JJ from Upstate New York dropped in to say what's up. What's up, JJ? From upstate New York, coming in to hang out tonight. El Tenda says it's a propaganda movie. I thought so, too. But, you know. The Jurassic Park jacket we found was cool. Yeah. It's killing Miss Cat that, that we got to sell it. But it's, it's entirely too big for her. But, yeah, we got that thing listed up right now. And, see, it's said something different for me. I usually don't pay up stuff like that. You know, we paid we paid top dollar for that, like 87 bucks at a Goodwill. But, yeah. I would love to find something like that. Great job. Wait till you see this week's video. The video I was editing today, I was working on the day, is really good. You know, I was, I've got a lot of footage, that's the thing. And, uh, and then me and Miss Cat are working on uh, our Comic Con. Uh, you know, we're coming up with some concept for the ideas for our Comic Con video and some new editing tricks and stuff. So you guys need to stay tuned. We got a lot of great stuff on the way. Nine people in here tonight. Wednesday night. What are y'all doing on your Wednesday night? Makes it hump day. I'm just hanging out because I ain't got Miss Cat home. She had to work over, so I gotta come hang out with you guys. Ten people in here. Make sure you're hitting the heart. 
Aaron Sands says, Yo, Snow, love your videos from England. Hey, we've got several viewers from across the pond over there. I appreciate your support. I'm glad you're liking the videos. Make sure you tell everybody. You know, we love our overseas following. Let's see here. Is it true Jurassic Park was based on a true story? That's what my cousin Ray Ray told me. I don't know if it was based on a true story, but it was based on a Michael Crichton book because I read the book when I was in jail. So. So what are we talking about this evening? Autocorrect put snow, my bad. It's okay, I know what you meant. <laughs> I get that a lot. I'm just one of that, you know, them, that generation that couldn't spell anything right. We had to smell, we had to spell snow with no W. We had to spell cat with a K. You know, that's just how we did things. All right, we got JP in here. What up, Snow? Sitting here with my son, watching you all eating a lunchable. That's not, that's a great dinner, <laughs> lunchable. I haven't even had the dinner yet, but uh, I'm just sitting here hanging out, shooting the breeze, trying to pass the time when Miss Cat gets home. You know, what better time? What better way to pass the time than hang out with you guys? I don't know, I hope y'all couldn't hear my tab. I hope I wasn't having an echo there. It was, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> We've been kind of off on the lives here lately. We, we, we'll we go a long break and not do any, then we'll do one uh, one a week for a couple weeks in a row. It's like, it's hard getting back in the swing of things, but uh, I enjoy doing the lives. But it's two hours of time that, you know, we gotta fill. And uh, thus far, you guys do a pretty good job of keeping me going, so. We're definitely excited about Comic Con. That's that's something we could talk about tonight. Comic Con, what we got going on for Comic Con? Uh, try some new editing techniques. I'm gonna try to bring you guys a very very spectacular video. And if you watch our channel and if you know anything, if you've seen the Comic Con video from last year, you go check it out. It says Indiana Comic Con 2023. Miss Cat's there dresses as April O'Neil, which is part of the reason why I'm assuming most people click the thumbnail. Uh, if you guys check out that video, it's really good, but I didn't know a lot of things. I didn't know how to do montages and some other things at that point in time. So this year's video is going to be epic. It's going to blow that video away, and we're really excited. So Nobody said in the comments, just listen to me ramble. We, I can ramble all night. That's all right. <laughs> but uh, we've, we've been dropping hints that we were going to go as Jesse and James from uh, Team Rocket to uh, Comic-Con. That'll definitely, fil that'll definitely filter into some of, the, of our buying choices while we're there, you know. Uh, we might even do a little live from there. I'm not sure just yet. We got a friend of ours, Heartland Vintage. Make sure you check him out. He's here on YouTube. He does a lot of shorts. He's going to be coming with us, help with some camera work, and just hang out and put out the vibe. So, yeah, we're going to have a blast at Comic-Con. What else we got here? We got Dame W. Love the Vintage Cuckoo jersey. Where'd you cop that? This, uh, this is one of them ones I think I copped on Poshmark for like 25 30 bucks way back when so I didn't really know what it was you know I got Ku Coach in white too uh, check out my jersey collection video which is actually really out of date now I've got like 30 or 40 more jer jerseys than I have in that video let's see what else we got going here my cousin Ray Ray got banned from Comic Con because careful they don't let you cosplay as the silver surfer apparently in only silver body paint well no 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 I don't think if you ain't got the right things covered up you better at least have a man bikini on that's painted silver along with it but my outfit, my costume isn't suggestive anyway. So we're good. We we leave the suggestive stuff for Miss Cat. <clears throat> Darren Hawkins from the UK. Evening snow. Love the old NBA jerseys and love from the old from the UK. Hey, we love all of our supporters from across the pond. And yeah, I got so many of these jerseys. It's it's insane. It's it's out of control. <laughs> I think now I've got somewhere in the neighborhood of between 130 and 150. I haven't done a count in a minute. Uh, what else we got going on here? Jason Wilson, Chicago Bulls jersey, like it, nice, nice. How old were you when you got your ears engaged or pierced? It's raining up my way, so you'll have to hear a nice sip, nice sandwich. I can't, I'm not exactly sure what all that meant. Uh, how old were you when you got your ears engaged? Well, when I got my ears gauged, I was, uh, I started gauging them probably when I was 15 years old or so. But then I went to, uh, I went into the... <laughs> possession of the state for a while and you couldn't have your gauges in so they closed back shut for a while and then me and Miss Cat re-gauged them back in like 2017 and then I went to this size which I can't even remember what size I'm at anymore 
but uh, it was a size that the tattoo artist had told me, that, or the piercer had told me, like, if you don't go past this size, your ears can actually heal back shut. So I always wanted the option to make sure that my ears could close back up, so I've had them off and on since I was 16. Let's keep going here. We got a... Do you have any soccer jerseys? I don't have any soccer jerseys. I'd like to get me maybe a Lionel Messi jersey just because, but I don't watch soccer. I, I think it's a sissy sport, I'm sorry to say. Um, but, you know, you do respect a man for his craft, and Messi is definitely the best. Let's see here. What's your favorite jersey? I like the 90s Charlottes and the 80s Hawks. And my favorite jersey in my collection is my Jordan All-Star jersey, the teal one from the, the 96 All-Star game. Um... That, yeah, that has to be my favorite jersey. But I've got so many good jerseys, and it's like, dude says soccer's terrible. Uh, Rodman was the most exciting Chicago Bull. Want to get a Rodman Lakers jersey? That's rare. You know, it's funny that you bring that up. I used to have a Rodman Lakers jersey, and I so I, I bought it. So I bought it on Mercari when Mercari was new. I bought it on there for seventy five dollars with with the tags on it, brand new. Which to me at the time that was a lot of money to invest in a jersey. And then I sat on. Then I listed it for like three hundred and sixty bucks and sat on it, sat on it, sat on it because I was like nobody will pay this price. And finally, lo and behold, somebody did, and. It's, now it's gone. I'll never get it back. And now the Rodman jerseys like the Mavericks and the Lakers wins have shot up so high that I, you know, I'll probably never get another one. So I kick myself for selling that Rodman Lakers jersey. But I've got his Spurs jersey, and I've got all three colors of the Bulls jersey. So I'm going to, you know, I'll keep looking for him. What else we got going on here? Ray Ray says, you can see through our webcam. Is that true? Uh, you can see us through your webcam. No, I can't see it, Ray Ray. I'm sorry about that. Uh, a bag full of wands. I'm in Michigan. Do you meet up with others from different states? We have. We've met up from with people from Ohio and so on and so forth. You know, at the reseller rally, we're always looking to collaborate with people, if, especially if we're in the area. Uh, me and Miss Katz talked about making another trip back to Philadelphia next year. New Jersey's just right down the road. We thought about maybe collabing with uh, Keith from Vinny Sports Flips because he's up that way. Uh, we're going to be traveling to Arkansas in October. We're going to be collaborating maybe with Pick and Preacher down that way at Retro Ricks Comic Con. So, yeah, we're open to collabs. What else we got here? It's the world sport, but fair enough. Aaron Sands says it's the world sport. Uh, yeah, too, uh, well, yeah, it's European soccer, That's it's it's so big. It, and it's got such a big following here in the United States. It just it wasn't my thing. I just, I guess because I wasn't that good at it. Not like I was basketball. So, uh and Masta says, I got Rodman in a wedding dress. I got a Rodman wedding dress. Hey, <laughs> that's a rare one, a Rodman wedding dress. Just worn once, right? <clears throat> so we've got 12 people in here on a Wednesday night just shooting the breeze. What else are we talking about? We've done touched on uh, soccer or European football. We've touched on uh, Vinny's jerseys and uh, some other some other things, some cosplay. Not as exciting without Miss Cat in here, huh? I'm sure she's in the comments. I'm sure she's listening. My favorite video game. Well, that's, uh, well, I mean, overall, all time is Turtles in Time. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time uh, for the Super Nintendo. But, you know, then you start asking me for different ones across different systems. You know, PlayStation 2 would probably be uh, my favorite game for PlayStation 2. That's a good one. Probably tw uh, Twisted Metal Black. I played the most. I played that the most. Uh, regular Nintendo, my favorite game is Mario 3. Um, Sega Genesis, favorite game is Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, it goes on. Let's see here. Do you still have the Optimus Prime G1 Snow? You guys still on that, bro? Especially in the box. Yeah, he's, he's up right up here on the very, very top shelf. I, I don't necessarily do Transformers. It's not, they're not my thing. I don't even like the Michael Bay movies like Miss Cat does, but it's just such a rarity and such a cool piece. I can't get rid of it, and I don't want to risk shipping it on eBay and or dealing with some sketchy buyer, so I just decided to keep it. He's up around the shelf. His bragging rights at this point. Let's see what else we got in here. But can you hear us? How do you know what I'm typing? I can I can see it right here on my, uh, I can see it right here on my tablet. That's how I know. You seen Froggy lately? Uh, I bumped into Froggy a couple of months back at a flea market in Muncie, and that was about that was the last time I've seen him. Seen him? I, I hit him up, I texted him. I don't know a couple of weeks ago, uh, asking about his toy show he's got coming up in August. Uh, Froggy's a busy man. Froggy has private picks he's going on. Pro Froggy has you know 
the uh, toy shows like Geek Meet Indy and stuff like that. He's a busy man, so he kind of does his thing. <clears throat> but see, uh, the flea market he was just at, that he just dropped his video in. I was there before him, and see that Ghostbuster car he bought for seventy five bucks. I could have bought that before he did, and I. I, I chose not to get it because uh, it's like I wasn't paying that much just for the box because the car itself inside was kind of crappy condition. Uh, the box is cool, but you know when you're reselling and hunting, you know for your collection and doing it for resale, you know you can't afford to pay seventy five dollars to have a pretty box. You know we, we're in this to you know get steals and deals. But uh, I'm glad to see that he got it. And then he's got a couple vendors that set up there that that hold stuff off for him specifically. So yeah. What else we got here? Does Froggy have a third ear? That's what my cousin says. Um, nah, I don't think he does. I've never seen it personally. Um, Aaron says, says, very true, need them deals. Yeah, you know, um, when you have, when you get YouTube money and you can, you know, um, you can go out and buy those high-end toys like that. It's cool to do that, but me and Miss Cat, we're going to stay, like we said it on here a bunch of times, we're going to stay doing what we do. We like the steals and deals. For us, it's about the hunt. Uh, I, you know... Just because I have the ability to go out and buy any given toy that I want for my collection, there's no fun in that. It's like you might as well get on eBay. So we go, we gonna keep, we gonna keep stealing, looking for these steals and deals out here. Um, my dream find would be a Jordan rookie at a garage sale. Imagine that. That's not hard for me to imagine because I tell you what, back in about 2014, I found one at a garage sale in Winchester, Indiana. Dude, come bringing it out. It had already been graded. It wasn't a high grade, but it had been graded. It was like, I think, if I remember correctly, it was like a 6.3, 6.5, something like that. And uh, he had offered it to me at the time for 400 bucks, which at the time was, I believe, was top of the market because sports cars hadn't blown up again, you know, it was way back when, you know, considered when sports cars were considered dead. Um, and I wish I would have bought that now. I really, truly do. But $400 was a lot, you know, like I said, I've been thrifting and buying on a budget like this for years. This isn't nothing new to me. You know, that whole, if you guys seen the video with Froggy where he come and went through all that camper, you know, I was buying that, all that stuff that's in that camper through a recession, you know, just hustling. So let's see what else we got here. Come to Iowa and do some picking. Hey, well, if they don't, if there's some town wides up there, some community sales and maybe another, you know, some people up there to collaborate with, we might consider it. You know, when, we, when our channel blows up and we get a little extra funds, what I will tell you is not going to change is the content's not going to change. What will change is that there'll be more of it. You know, we're going to continue to do what we do, but our channel blowing up would enable us to go to like places like Peaches and Beaches or go, you know, stay in another state for two or three days and just, you know, hit garage sales and then come back. That's, that's our goal. So let's see here. Uh, what's your favorite horror memorabilia? Oh, we got so much good horror memorabilia now, you know, especially meeting Kane like we have and, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we got some. I, I I got myself right here, so I had to stop and look at it. Um, I, this is my favorite piece thus far. I'm gonna knock this down, and Miss Cat's gonna be mad at me. <laughs> That's my favorite piece thus far. That's my uh, original Friday the Thirteenth in the box. You and your friends are dead, signed by Kane Hodder. That's my favorite piece of horror memorabilia uh, in my collection. And I would venture to say that Miss Cat's autographed jersey is probably her favorite piece. So, but we we're looking to add to it. You know, we uh, we're planning to get meet Matthew Lillard this year. That's that's hopefully the plan at a uh, Comic Con or not Comic Con Horror Fest. Excuse me. My cousin prints rookie cards all the time and sells them to elementary school kids. Do you want him to print one for you? He told me they're authentic. I uh, no, I'm good. I I like mine legit. You know the the was it the flare. Um, is actually there was the guy who had printed Michael Jordan's original rookie card, and he was the one who printed it first. But then come to find out years later, he he kept the press and he was still printing them. So that's what made that card actually worthless. So that's actually pretty close. Let's see what we got here. Aaron Sanders says, "Awesome, you should go to one of them places that make action figures, and and make one of you and." So I don't know what to do now. Well, anyway, sorry. Vinny Sports Flips, what up, man? How's it going? Miss Cat's FaceTime was trying to FaceTime me in the middle of this uh, live. I'm not sure exactly what to do. All right, let me see here. 
Your collection is dope. I see you have sneakers on the display. Do you have a big sneaker collection? I got quite a few sneakers, as a, as a matter of fact. I got a whole bunch of them. Uh, yeah, Miss Cat was trying to FaceTime me. Um, and I don't know. So, she knows I was supposed to be doing a live. Let me see. Hi, baby. You remember I'm doing a live, right? Oh, shoot, no. Yeah, I'm on live right now. Yeah, I'm going from six to eight. Can you guys still hear me out there with me on live with this tablet? I can't read your comments right now, but Miss Katza. Uh... All right, I love you. I'll, I'll watch you on your live. See, there's people talking. Somebody says, yo, Kat. See, there she is. Bye. See, she made it to the live after all. In her nurse's getup. All right, babe. I'll let you go. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm all right, I love you too. Bye. Bye. Okay, hopefully that didn't interrupt y'all too much. Okay, sorry about that. Did y'all uh, did y'all see that? Did I cut out on you again? Nurses get up and ain't even cosplay. Yeah, uh, not Heck and Steve's in here. It's nice to see you, Heck and Steve. Uh, big big fan of yours. Big fan of your content. Me and Miss Cat's been watching you for a while now, and, and we love it. And hey, there's Miss Cat. She's made it to the comments now. Uh, they thought they said you're in the nurses' get up, and you're not even cosplaying. No, that's not a cosplay. That's a career for her. <laughs> uh, Vinny Sports flips in here, Keith. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Heck and Steve, go check out Heck and Steve. If you like a good, you know, Comedy Central style roast, you know, it's it's kind of like the angry video game nerd meets reseller bashing and, and we love it we do love it <laughs> and it's, it's great content you know because like i say we're, we're collectors first but anywho back to the uh back to the comments here uh what's going on everybody i forgot what we were talking about miss cat done uh got me sidetracked but at least she made it at least y'all got a chance to see her tonight she knew I was going to be live tonight because uh, that's what I do when she has to work over. I dig the Turtles figures. Oh, yeah. They vintage, too. That's some of our favorite stuff. I got my vintage Casey Jones back here and vintage April. Love our Turtle stuff. You get, you're starting to get yourself a nice little background too, Steve. And you know, you got getting, getting your video games all up over there beside you. I'm liking the way it looks. But tell me something. What's with the blank wall behind you with just the Super Mario Wonders? <laughs> what's that all about? I gotta know. Because that's, that's such great. Bat, you you got such great space behind you. It should be utilized. That would be cool if turtles were a real animal. Turtle, turtles are a real animal. Lots of varieties of turtles. He says, you got to collect the 18-inch NECA horror. Not many, but they're a nice Freddy, Jason, and Michael Myers. You have to look into that. We have uh, we haven't checked into too much of the NECA. I mean, because I've liked some of the Jason ones they've done, like uh, the ones that open up like a book, you know, like the Friday the 13th Part 7 ones. that They look really cool, but we're actually more looking for the McFarlands. The McFarlands are a little older. As far as horror figures go, that's what you would call, I would say vintage would be the McFarlands. Yeah, they are really nice, but really big. Yeah, and see, we're really limited on our shelf space, too. That's a whole nother thing. Well, they're comic book characters based on real animals. <laughs> I got to put some swag behind me. You're right. Oh, yeah. you got, see, you got, see, when you got all this space behind you, you got to utilize it. You know, you got plenty of room back there. Oh, if you need help filling it, let me know. You see anything on the channel, you hit me up on Instagram. I'll hook you up with a deal. We'll help you fill themselves up quick. I got Spider-Man stuff in the box sitting around. I've got Ninja Turtle stuff in the box sitting around. Hit me up. We'll hook you up. We'll get your background looking right real quick. What else we got going on? Make sure you guys check out Vinny Sports Flips. He's in the comments tonight. I'm assuming he's watching. I'm going to be on his show. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be on his show Wednesday, next Wednesday. Um, yeah, next Wednesday night, and we're going to be doing, we're going to be drafting our, our favorite horror movies, and I think he thought that was just perfect for me to, that would fit in, you know, because we're the big horror junkies around here, so, 
Make sure you check me check me and Miss Cat out on uh, his channel. Well, we're not sure if Miss Cat's going to make it. She might pop her head in there, but it's me and her's picks. So, and we'll be live Wednesday night. Yeah, go see one of the giant tortoises. They're that big. And hell, they live for hundreds and hundreds of years, Imasta. Hoping Donnie DeChico stops in tonight. If you guys watch our lives or, you know, if you've been around for a while, you, we got a guy who usually stops in named Donnie DeChico. He usually stops in on our lives and say what's up. Uh, thanks, Snow. Have a cool horror giveaway for that show, too. Oh, see? All right. You got to make sure you tune in Wednesday night to Vinny Sports Flip's channel. You know, we're, he's, got a, he's got a giveaway, something vintage horror. And I guess I'm not eligible for the, uh, uh, I guess I'm not eligible for the giveaway. Dang it. But you guys are, so you guys make sure you tune in. Uh, Imasta, can you shout out my cousin's business too? Ray Ray's phones and foot massage. Hey, make sure you check out Ray Ray's phones and foot massage. Yeah. You selling them uh, bootleg boost mobiles and giving foot rubs? Is that what's happening? Miss Cat knew who it was. <laughs> 18 people in here. That's a lot for a Wednesday night. What's everybody doing on their hump day? We got Miss Cats in the comments. Heck and Steve's in the comments. We got Vinny Sports Flips. Make sure you check out Heck and Steve and Vinny Sports Flips. They got great channels. You're eligible, just Andy is. Oh, okay, I'm eligible to win this. And, you know, Miss Cat, she's eligible too. I mean, we get two chances to win, right? We're trying to stack this system. We're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to, no, we can't do that. That's not right. We got enough horror stuff. Let one of the viewers get it. Says, thank you. We love you. You're an awesome guy. Yeah, make sure you check out Ray Ray's bootleg phones and foot massage. <laughs> there you go. Love just playing along. So, comments are dwindling down on me. You're leaving it on me to keep the conversation going. I know that we're excited about Comic-Con, but not only Comic-Con, we're excited about Horror Fest 2 coming up this year. I think the goal is we're going to meet... Uh, we're going to try to meet Matthew Lillard. What do you think, Miss Cat? You think this should be the year that we go meet Matthew Lillard? He's going to be at, he's going to be at Horror Fest. Verizon has some competition. Yes. Yes. Aaron Sands wants to know how work is, Miss Cat. She's in the comments there. Yeah, Verizon's in big trouble with Ray Ray's out there. He got cell coverage from coast to coast with a foot rub included. He says, I got a 27-inch bat wing from Spin Master. Look, look, at it look cheap. I repainted it flat black and added some wear to it. It looked better than the $200 McFarland bat wing. And that's how you do it. I mean, uh, I mean, we done something similar like that. Miss Cat got me the uh, Back to the Future Universal Studio Back to the Future Nike Air Max. Let's just be real here. Nobody can afford $10,000 for a pair of shoes. Uh, so we got those Universal Studios ones, and I got them for a steal on Poshmark, and Miss Cat found somebody on Etsy who made the little kits, you know, makes the stripe, makes the Air Mag logos and stuff to put on the back of it, and, uh, yeah, that, I made my own set of Air Mags, so yeah, take, buying something, a prop replica, and taking it and make it look movie quality is definitely something easy to do. iPhones and foot rubs sound like a Trailer Park Boys type of scheme. It might work, though. It might work. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. What time is it there at the moment? Here is 6.20 p.m. at the moment. Miss Cat's stuck at work for another three hours at least. And it is 23.20 there. So it means it's almost midnight there. What are you guys doing up so late watching me? Foot rubs and chips. Phones and foot rubs. <laughs> I think Heck and Steve's landed it. Phones and foot rubs sound like a trailer park boys type of scheme. Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> I think he's hit the nail right on the head. Ethel says, Ethel says four. Oh, you're stuck there for another four hours. Oh, Miss Cat's stuck at work for another four hours. Well, yeah, because she don't technically recoveries don't show up till like 9.50. So late night for Miss Cat and strikers with grandma for the next few hours. So I just, I'm just hanging out with y'all. And we're right now we're promoting Ray Ray's bootleg phones and foot rubs. I expect fifteen percent commission now too, since we're since we're since we're promoting. <laughs> Miss Cat's gotta count the drive home too. You hear about the move the movie Rust Amore? She got hit with an involuntary the movie Rust Amore. 
She got hit with involuntary manslaughter. Crazy. No, I didn't hear about that. I did not. Trailer Park Boys are awesome. The worst acting, but still hilarious. Um, yeah, I kind of. I'm not a biggest. I'm not the biggest fan of the Trailer Park. Uh, uh, Trailer Park Boys myself either. But it, it's just because it's like you're right. It is terrible. I don't know. I guess I should be more into them. I mean, I come from the Jackass era. I don't know. It's just after you've seen a certain amount of things, some things just. I guess I don't know even what's my age. Some things just aren't funny anymore. I don't know. I'm an old guy. Aaron Sands says he's working hard. Working hard at midnight at night? Well, I'm hoping, hopefully we can uh, keep you entertained for a little while while you're working hard. At least hit you with some good conversation. He says it. Oh, Miss Cat. Oh, Miss Cat stays working hard. The whole place depends on her. <laughs> she is the wound nurse, so she has to go through and fix everybody's wounds. Yeah. Tell him about it, Miss Cat. Oh, he's in bed. He is laying in bed watching a watching a YouTube live. All right. Tell him about it, Miss Cat. Tell him how you have to go through and do all the work in that place. That way, we'll have a record of it here on video. All right. So, what we got here? When is that Toxic Avenger game dropping? I seen the video game when you guys played it in the demo. You know, that's a good question. I uh, I need to... Miss Cat says she loves her job. She's very good at her job. Okay. Um, that Toxic Avenger video game. Make sure if you're not following RetroWare on Instagram, go follow them on in Instagram. RetroWare. R-E-T-R-O-W-A-R-E. And uh, that's who's, they keep you up to date. And I, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to drop here within the next three or four months. I, they haven't, I haven't seen anything about it in a minute, but trust me, I'm waiting too. And it's supposed to be coming to all platforms, which is that much more exciting because it's coming to the Nintendo Switch. And it's a side scroll and beat em up and it is awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for it too. Trust me, when, you guys, when it comes out, you guys will know because I'll be throwing up a little review of it. I live in a, uh, Vinny Sports Flip says he lives, I live a town over from where a lot of the Jack Hat boys grew up. Dunn, Ryan, uh, Ryan Dunn and uh, Bam Margera. So you must be, uh, I can't remember where they're from now. Uh, they end up having to move away from there because he kept getting, kept getting in trouble with the city, uh, city ordinance. Uh, Heck and Steve says, I'm working right now too. What are you doing, Heck and Steve? Are you working on another video or do you have a, you have a site? I mean, do you have an actual job that you go to, uh? I mean, if I'm not getting too personal anyway. This isn't a Heck and Steve interview. This is a live here. But yeah, what are you doing, Mr. Steve? Uh, what is the name of that town, Keith, since you're in the subject? I mean, since you're on the subject, uh, where are they from, uh, Bam Margera and them? And we got our cousin Ray Ray back in the comments. says he will give you 15% off of your first phone or foot massage if you feature him on a toy hunt. Well, you make sure that he's ever in the area during rummage sale season. We'll, we'll take him on a toy hunt. We'll take Cousin Ray Ray out on a toy hunt. <laughs> uh, me and my sons are playing the Texas Chainsaw for PS5. Sick. Check it out when you get a chance. I have it. I, um, I have it on the PS5 and I'm dying to play it, but I'm waiting on Retro Rick to send me my PlayStation 5. So... I know that they don't walk in the door of his store every day and that there's a waiting list and I know he's going to get it to me because I have spoke to him, you know, but uh, yes, I'm dying to play that Texas Chainsaw game and I can't because my PlayStation 5 has not arrived. Let's see what else we got here. Heck and Steve says, I have a full-time job, a part-time job, and the YouTube. And Bam is from Westchester. Thank you. Westchester, Pennsylvania. I, I kept wanting to say Winchester. No, I was like, that's, that's a few towns over from me. So let's see what else we got here. Ray Ray says he is in Muncie tomorrow. Let's see. Well, I, I can't do nothing tomorrow, but, uh, I mean, there's no sales around here. It's, you're at the wrong season. You got to wait for rummy sale season to kick in. We've got Christopher Nutter in the house. What's up, Christopher Nutter? Thanks for stopping in. My full time, I'm a home health in home health intake coordinator. Lots of typing and reading from home. Well, that's cool. My sister does something in that home health line, uh, it's a good career. And you got the YouTube on the side. And you got a part-time job. Man's hustling. Let's see what else we got here. 
So, you, Steve, you're into the Madden games, if I remember correctly. Uh, what's your favorite year of Madden? Uh, that's a good question right there. Miss Cat says she she liked she liked home health. Yeah, we got eighteen people in here tonight. I just love I love that. Can't believe there's eighteen people in here. Yeah, heckin' heckin' hustler Steve. Yeah. I mean, I get it though. It's like content creator, reseller, and stay at home father. It, it's yeah. I know. <laughs> it's like having multiple jobs. Each one rewarding in their own way. What else we got going on here? Aaron Sands. Heck and Steve Hunt. Okay, what's your top two? What's your top two horror movies? Snow. Mine is Exorcist and The First Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, I can't really. Madden 2006 and Madden 25 were great. Okay, it was Madden 2006. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember which one I played. There was one I played a lot too, and it was the one with Michael Vick on the cover. Michael Vick was a cheat code. And, and I was really good at Madden for a long time, but I kind of like, I quit playing it after whatever one came out on the PlayStation 3. You have to correct me uh, which one it was that had Michael Vick on the cover. That was that was probably my favorite. Um, back to JP, your two favorite horror movies, Exorcist and Nightmare on Elm Street. I, I would love to tell you what my top two favorite horror movies are, and I've got it written down right over here on my notepad. But uh, uh, tune in to Vinny Sports Flips channel on Wednesday night. I'll be... We'll be drafting our top five favorite movies, and uh, I'm gonna I'll be revealing them then. Okay, Miss Cat says she has to go back to work. All right, I love you too, dear. Don't work too hard. Thanks for stopping in tonight. Uh, Richard Nasty said Tony Kukoc. That's right. The the Croatian sensation. Vic was on 2007, I believe. Okay, yeah, I played that. I played, Vic was a cheat code on that one. Uh, you ever get you ever cross paths sometime? I have to play you in a game of Madden, Steve. That'd be great. What we got going on here? Uh, Miss Cat says bye to everyone and thanks for watching and hanging out. So everybody say bye to Miss Cat. She's going back to take care of her. Uh, she's going back to take care of her residence for the evening. Where do you sell your stuff? I sell my stuff on eBay and Poshmark. Heck and Steve says nope. It was 2004. I just checked. Okay, 2004. Well, if we ever cross paths, I challenge you to a game of Madden in 2004. Madden 2004. We'll see. And. Take it, take that with a grain of salt because I haven't played I haven't played it probably since two thousand and five or six. So, uh, what we got here? Uh, Aaron Sands says, "Hope your last few hours are good, Miss Cat." Yep, everybody wish Miss Cat happy hours. Hope they go by fast for her, so she can get back here and me and Striker can terrorize her because that's just what we do. See, Madden games, especially in the reselling community, football games, sports games in general don't get enough love anyhow. I mean, I've wasted so many hours on Madden games. So many hours on, uh, yes, Ethel is Miss Cat. Yep. Um, James Perkins says, says, hey, sorry, haven't watched your Pick and Preacher interview yet. Was it fun? Love your stuff. Yes, we had a blast with the Pick and Preacher. It's great being around like-minded people, uh, you know. I, I happen to study theology myself, so I, I know my way around the Bible really, really well. And, and me and Steve had, I mean, not me and Steve, me and uh, Keith had very, very good conversation at the end of his, uh, at the end of his interview. And I'm, I'm glad I got to ask him some serious questions to get, some, get his outlook as a man of the Lord. So if you haven't watched that yet, go back and check it out. Very highly recommend even checking out Keith's channel. Everything about the Pick Your Preacher, he, he's a great guy and his channel is just funny. His edits are, his edits are hilarious. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that was Miss Cat. That's cool, he says. Uh, what's up with the new Friday the 13th movie? It's been too long. They're still fighting over the rights in court. No, they got the rights finally settled. Um, and Victor Miller ended up winning the case. But basically, he's collecting a certain amount of money, and projects are now being greenlit and moved forward. I highly suggest you check out Jimmy Champagne. Um, on YouTube, he keeps you up to date on all the newest horror stuff and what there is coming out right now. Well, within the next few months, it's supposed to be called Crystal Lake, and it's a TV show. It's going to be on Peacock, based on I, I'm assume, I'm assuming it's going to be like uh, from where Pamela Voorhees starts working at summer camp and Jason very small and building up to adult Jason. I'm assuming what this TV show is going to be. So if you're ready for your Friday the 13th fix, look up Crystal Lake. It's going to be streaming on Peacock, 
and there's already some great articles about it now. James Perkins says he is great. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, actually, I was uh, I was on Instagram with him today because me and Kat are talking about doing some very fancy editing for our uh, Comic Con video, and I had to go to him. You know, I had to go to him for some ideas. Like, hey, man, how do you do this, or how would I do that? You know, because because his edit, he's the only person I know that I can go to. Like, you know, to ask about some of these edits that he does. So, let's see. His channel is so entertaining. I'm not even a big video game guy. Yeah, yep. And you know, something as complex as the Sega Saturn. And because that's what he specializes in, he's on, he's hunting for Sega Saturn games. That's a complex console to even hunt hunt for. It's something that don't even pop up very often, and yet he manages to keep content about video games that I've never even seen. I can tell you the last time I seen a Sega CD game outside or a Sega Saturn game outside of a video game store, and that was probably probably fifteen years ago. There used to be an old junk store here in here in the town where we live. And uh, it was a dollar store, then the dollar store closed up and some people moved in there and made it kind of like a, a junk store, a thrift store, whatever you call it. And there were some Sega Saturn games in there. I kicked myself in the butt for not buying them way back when, but they had like, Echo the Dolphin and some other ones. But the Saturn was considered a flop back then, so them games sat in there and sat in there and sat in a thrift store shelf. And I don't think that they ever sold, to be honest with you, until the thrift store closed up. Uh, what else we got going on down here? So yeah, somebody to hunt for such an obscure console and to keep coming out with content, you know, it's, yeah, he does really, really good. And his edits for the sake of edits are funny. <laughs> and I've been able to take some of the things I've learned from him and, you know, put them into my own videos. Terminator 1 for the Sega CD was my go-to game back in the day. I got to get it again. It's up there in price now. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I've never played that, but I can imagine that was good. And I think they had an Alien versus Predator game that was on the Sega Saturn or Sega CD, one of the two. I could get them too confused. Uh, they were both around the same time. My cousin Ray Ray lit my rabbit's foot collection on fire because my aunt said they were blasphemous. Then the judge ruled he was not competent to stand trial, so he got away with it. <laughs> Your cousin Ray Ray's got issues. You can't burn Lucky Rabbit's feet. Actually, I don't even know if that's probably taboo to have rabbit's feet nowadays. When somebody's like, that's cruel. I, I can remember having a Lucky Rabbit's foot in, uh, on my keychain for a long time as a kid. So, And my dog is over here making funny noises. Lou, what are you grunting at? Oh, we got 13 diehards hanging out in here. We've been in here for 43 minutes. What's good? What else are we talking about? I've heard that there's some major studios that are in that are in right now bidding wars trying to get the rights to the Halloween, or somebody did finally win the rights to Halloween. So um, uh, they might be doing another Halloween movie. I can't imagine where they would go with it now, especially with that Halloween ends. I, to me, I felt like ruined the whole series anyway, but. Uh, maybe if another production company gets a hold of it and does something a little differently, um, me and Miss Cat are really excited about Ghostbusters Frozen Kingdom. That's where it's at. And, and we're going to the theaters to see that just as soon as we can. And yeah, expect a live to follow and spoilers. That's, that's the big thing. <clears throat> see, Ghostbusters has finally got, gotten it on, on path as far as I'm concerned. They kind of lost it whenever they made that one with all the females in it because they went the wrong direction with it. Our generation demands legacy films and if that don't tie into the legacy film then it didn't work and that was the problem. But now that they've got the original cast all working together and then they brought in this new cast. Like I love uh, what's his name? Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd in this role and uh, I'm really excited to see. Uh, to me this I have a feeling that this is going to be like a full on passing of the torch. And it may be a very bold prediction, but I'm making it right now, and it's going to be live, and it's going to be forever out there. I think Peter Vakeman's going to die in this in this Ghostbusters movie. Mark my words. You know, we're going to lose one of them for sure. So, it says, we are excited for the new Ghostbusters too. Oh, yeah. Yep. What else we got on? Yeah, the female cast was awful. I hated that movie. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. I have, uh, I have deliberately not watched, like James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. I've taken his approach to this situation. I'm not, uh, uh, I just, I refused to see it. I didn't want to see it in that light. Especially when I heard that the original Ghostbusters were in it, 
but they had cameos and they weren't even cameos of their characters. They were just cameos. It's like you missed a chance to even tie it even in just a little bit. They could have tied it in. Um, yeah, it's bad. I just didn't want to sound sexist for saying it was the all-female Ghostbusters and it sucks. Um, but it's the all-females Ghostbusters and it sucks. <laughs> Let's see what else we got going on here. He says, yeah. Uh, yeah, that Halloween's end was trash. They did Michael Myers. They did Myers bogus with the car pressure. That was trash. Yeah. <clears throat> he said that's the trouble with rehashed movies. Yeah. Well, that's a, well, you can get away with it with certain generations. Certain you know, certain people will allow that. But at least it's, I, I can't say I'm a duly representative for my uh, my <laughs> Zenio era. But I do say like you have to have something that ties the old movie into the rehash or into the new movie. Um, if they would have released Ghostbusters, like this newest one they've done, Afterlife, if they would have released it in the place of that women's Ghostbusters when Harold Ramis was still alive and they were all bickering and couldn't get it done right, we would be far along into the Ghostbusters universe now that we're not because of that years that they couldn't get it all right. What else we got here? He said it's the, com it's, it's, it's the common thing now, yeah. But the more the more the uh, the viewers, the more the watchers, the more people like us. That, you know, there's a lot of people out here uh, doing movie reviews and stuff. The more you complain, the more Hollywood does pay attention and uh, finally does change things for the better, at least in some situations, unless you're Disney. But we won't go into that either. He says Paul Rudd's best movie was Mac and Me. Now I know Mac and Me pretty well, but I don't recall Paul Rudd in it. I mean, he might have been, but. Uh, my, you want to talk about a young Paul Rudd, you go back to Halloween 4, you know, the return of Michael Myers. There's a very, very young Paul Rudd. And you start seeing him throughout the years, and you think for a long while, it's almost like you didn't think he, he aged. I almost thought he was a vampire. Hey, we got us a super chat here. Here's your first cut from Ray Ray. He got, he said, use the code Snow Snow Feet for $5 off. All right. He hit us with a $5 super chat. You know, mate, Ray Ray's, uh, uh, Ray Ray's phones and foot rubs. Uh, said use code Snow Snow Feet for five dollars off. <laughs> uh, that's that's too cool. Thank you. Appreciate that five dollar super chat there. Ah, uh, we got got the I got the rambling. We lost some people, but it's okay. Um, I don't know when it comes to these movies. It's me and Cat be the first to tell you there's certain things we expect to see when it comes to. Uh, you know, a rehash or a remake or a reboot or a continuation. And Hollywood's been doing it wrong for a while now. Um, I think they're finally starting to get the hang of it, at least with some things. And I think mainstream Hollywood's finally starting to pick up some on the horse. Like he, Eli Roth and his slasher movie, that, you know, Thanksgiving, that was really good. And it did get a lot of push from, like, the mainstream Hollywood deal. You know, so it goes to show that horror's not a dead, that's not a dead market yet, and you can still make a good slasher film even in this era. He has, what else? They took, they took it too far. Myers as a, is a mental patient. He's not a zombie, immortal killer like Jason. John Carpenter not want to make a sequel. He just did it for a check. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I can see. It. Well, you can see like, uh, you had it happens in Terminator. You know, once Cameron wasn't involved, you know, Arnold stayed on just for a check, even though the roles got worse and worse for him. Um, he has you on the tax record. You should be getting a 1099. So I'm like, good. I got another 1099 coming from YouTube too. Let's see here. And yeah, they made they you know he wasn't a, an unstoppable killing machine, but you know he always he aside from a mental patient aside, you got to look at Halloween too. He did take two gunshots directly to the eyes and still managed to be alive. So there, there has to, there might be some super, you know, natural or some superhuman as, aesthetic to him. But as far as they make him just coming out here, just swinging axes and just butchering people, yeah, they took it insanely too far. It was actually just killing for the sake of killing. It was gore for the sake of gore. And what made Michael Myers really good, especially in the first one, was there was very little gore, and he was, but he was just. In the shadows, he was, you know, he was scarier that way. But it is what it is. Me and Kat watched them all the way through because we are the horror fans that we are. But uh, I tell you, beyond Halloween Kill, I mean, well, even up to Halloween Kills, it was, they don't have any replay replayability to me. 
Me and Kat wouldn't go back and watch them again, but we would certainly go back and watch Dark Harvest, which if you guys haven't seen Dark Harvest, that's a very underrated horror movie that you could probably find streaming now. And then we would go back and watch uh, Eli Ross uh, Thanksgiving, but we wouldn't go back and watch Halloween's, and that 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 says something. So um, if if the IRS calls, tell him that he hangs your drywall. No phones. Okay, I'll make sure that I I don't tell him about Ray Ray's phones or foot rub, foot rubs. He's just a drywall installer. What else we got going on here? Does Ray Ray do ingrown toenails? There's a great question for Ray Ray. Uh, does Ray Ray do ingrown toenails? And what's he charged to fly across the pond? <laughs> the foot rub. The complimentary foot rub. Freddy is the best. I got some Freddy dunks. Um, I have qualms with Freddy. Because of what Freddy was before he was Freddy. I mean, the fact that he was a child molester, a child killer. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. But the character that Robert England, Robert England, however you want to pronounce his name, Robert England elevated Freddy to is beyond his backstory. That's what's incredible. So it's, it's, it's crazy to take, uh, you know, it's easy to look at Jason as like, you can feel, almost feel bad for him because of his backstory. He was a child who drowned, cursed, this, that, or the other. Freddy was a child killer, you know, see, to make, to take a character that heinous and that vital, vile and make him a likable character was not the writers who did that, it was the actor who played him that did that. That's what made Nightmare so good. Uh, first Candyman was classic too. Uh, you know, the first Candyman to me was more psychological than horror, and I'm not a psychological person, but, uh, Cat really likes, Cat really likes the Candyman series. It's me and her had sat down and watched them all the way through, uh, the, up until the newest one they done, which was terrible, of course. <clears throat> Nobody was more disappointed than Miss Cat because she does like Candyman. She does love Tony Todd, but <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Matter how many lives me and Miss Cat do, somehow we always end up into talking into horror movies. You know, make sure you guys show up Wednesday night to Vinny Sports Flips channels. Keith, we'll be talking about horror movies over there, and he'll have a horror-related prize to give away to some lucky viewer. Not named Andy. Fifteen people in here on hump day on a Wednesday night. We're still waiting. We got to know how long does, what's Ray Ray charged to fly overseas and handle the toenail, ingrown toenails. Uh, Eric Bolt, there we go, getting in the comments. He says, I've watched most of the Halloween movies over the past week. I only like a few of them. Scream is probably my favorite horror franchise. I also like Nightmare on Elm Street a lot. Uh, I love Scream, but Scream is another one that I think they took it too far. It's, you can only go past a certain point. And, and now they've actually stalemated because the, the storyline that they were pursuing with that Jenna Ortega, now they have to abandon that storyline because she chose uh, Wednesday, which I don't blame her. She chose Wednesday over this you know aging horror franchise. So now that whole storyline that they've been building up to is completely dead in the water because she took because she took uh, that role of Wednesday instead. What else we got going on here? Did you see Sting's last match? No, I didn't see Sting's last match. Uh, not not on TV. I've seen uh, clips of it on TikTok, and uh, I know that he went completely uh, what, uh, undefeated in AEW. He's had a, he's had a great run. He really has. I'm I'd be surprised. I'm, su I'm surprised he's still going, but you know. I'm surprised Rick Ric Flair's still hanging around and a lot of these other ones and Hulkster, but they're, they're still doing it. So kudos to them. It's about them, like Tom Brady, they, they, no matter how old they get, they don't want to quit. <laughs> Let's see what else we got on over here. Um, Vinny Sports Flip says, Laugh out loud, thanks, no, can't wait. Yeah, should be an interesting uh, should be an interesting draft. Seeing you guys meet Kane Hodder. He's a big dude, seems cool. My son met him, got a hatchet started by him at the convention in Chicago. Yeah, he... He's he's cool. He's he's like I think he's like six four, six six, something like that. Uh, he's he's cool as a fan. And w for what you guys got to see in the footage, there's just as much footage that y'all didn't get to see because there was conversations that we, he didn't want on camera, you know. And uh, and we respected his wishes. But yeah, we're looking forward to us uh, meeting him again this year. We're gonna do that bourbon on the rocks. As a matter of fact, me and Miss Cat are gonna offer to take him out to dinner after the fact. Uh, we've seen another couple did that last year and he, he took him up on it. So we're going to do it this year. Maybe we'll get to get lucky and have dinner with Kane and, uh, RA. Uh, we got a, we got a McFarlane Leatherface figure back here. We plan to get autographed by RA this year. So that should be cool. Aaron Sands says, woo, Ric Flair, woo. 
Ray Ray said he is not permitted to fly to England, but anywhere else in the UK is acceptable. If you pay the ticket, he and he left at the ingrown toenail. So he said, Ray Ray says, if you pay the ticket, he will fly to England and take care of your ingrown toenail and deliver you a phone. Well, he can't fly to England anywhere but England, so you have to meet him on the outskirts. <laughs> Interesting conversations happening in the chat that I'm just kind of narrating back and forth. All right, Scream probably should have stopped uh, after four, but didn't mind five and six. I think they're all right. I haven't watched any of the TV series, though. I wonder if it's good. See, I haven't watched TV series either. I had time. Uh, me and Kat are real limited on our time to watch TV. Uh, so we're real picky about what we choose. It's like, I would really like to watch the, the Chucky, you know, the Child's Play TV series they got going on with, you know, the kid, Alex Vincent, you know, who, who played little Andy Barkley, has come back and replies his role. So is... Uh, the girl who played Kyle, um, and a lot of other people, and Fiona Dorff's in it, and uh, Jennifer Tilly, and I'm like, man, I want to, want to check these out, but we just ain't had time. Uh, I didn't care for five and six when it comes to Scream. I mean, I really didn't. Um, I watched them, and, and then me and Kat was really, really sore about the way they did Dewey off, because yeah, we're you know big David Arquette fans. We, we're not necessarily the biggest fan of his, but his role as Dewey it was, you know. Once you've developed a certain connection to, to a character for so long, uh, Tony. Oh, Tony Kukoc, okay. Yeah, once you uh, once you uh, get attached to a character, you you don't mind seeing him die, but seeing him die the way that they destroyed Dewey was terrible. So yeah, we have qualms with the last few uh, screen movies. Chris Page is in the comments. That's Heartland Vange. I was telling you about. He'll be going to Comic Con with us. He says, uh, "What's up, Snow? I mean, Tony. He's referring to the Jersey Tony Kukoc, the Croatian sensation. What's your favorite Evil Dead, Snow? Me, Evil Dead Two was sick. Did you see Freddy Glove in the in work shed? He uh, when he took Linda's head to saw it up. Yeah. Miss Cat is the Evil Dead fan. Now, I'll watch him. Uh, I don't think a lot of the Special effects have aged well, and that's fine because me and Cat love B movies. But uh, it's certainly more her thing than mine. Um, I, I like Army of Darkness. If you know, if I had to pick one, Army of Darkness is the best way to go for me. But uh, we've certainly got Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. Miss Cat has them right down here on VHS. So, uh, all right, Aaron Sands. Uh, he says I'm off to sleep. Peace and love, Snow. All right, take it easy. I'm surprised you made it this long. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us uh, from uh, overseas. This is going to be getting close to 1230 tonight for you, so you have a good night, buddy. Um, have you seen Tucker and Dale vs. Evil? I haven't seen Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Um, it, it, to me, it fell in that category as like Shaun of the Dead and stuff like that, and I'm not into the uh, the comedy horrors, per se. I mean, I watched some of them, you know. I like my horror, some with a certain level of comedy, but I don't like comedy horrors, if, you, if that makes sense. Uh... You're not gonna get me with that one, monster. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you ain't gonna get me with that comment. Somebody, he almost got me. He says my favorite. What my favorite movie is is uh. But uh, yeah. That don't work on me. I, I invented that. Well, the comments have died out on me. Here we got 16 people watching. We're an hour in. Uh, I've allotted two hours, but um. You know. If I can't if I can't keep the conversation going or people start dipping out, I might I might leave a little early. But we've managed to keep 16, 17, 18 people in here for most of the time. And I'm surprised without Miss Cat. At least she was in the comments. All right. What else are we talking about here? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys to keep me going. Plenty of conversations. We've been uh, we've been watching Pokemon a lot lately. Uh, he said, <laughs> he says a ger he says a German horror movie starring Hans Frederick. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it is. Um, we've been watching Pokemon a lot lately. If you guys ain't got net, if you guys got Netflix, like, go check out the Indigo League on Pokemon. Me and Miss Cat have sit recently sat down and watched all 52 episodes of the first, the original Pokemon, and we're loving it. Um, and Striker's loving it too. That's the great thing. 21 people. Willie, Willis Ritchie says, when are you doing another video with Froggy? I, I don't know that we'll, uh, I don't know if we'll get another video with Froggy, to be honest with you. I, 
I've reached out to him a few times. Uh, like I said earlier in the uh, conversation, uh, Froggy's a busy man. He has a uh, private picks he goes on now. Um, he has like toy shows, geek meet indie stuff like that nature, and um, <clears throat> you know he. Uh, we we just I mean I bumped into him at the flea market over there in Muncie a couple times, but uh, really we're me and him are in two different realms now. Uh, he he's kind of yo. Know, he has money that I don't have. You know, he can go out and buy these high-end toys. He can go out and drop fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars at a at a toy show. I can't do that. So really, <laughs> we don't really have any. We don't have much commonality at this point. We're into the same stuff, but we're in two different stratospheres of collectibles. Wise, I mean, I can find stuff like that Optimus Prime and stuff out there in the wild. That's few and far between. But I can't just walk to a toy show and buy anything I want like Froggy can. So uh, I don't know that there's much room for collaborations there. You hit up his channel and. Drop the comments on it and be like, hey, we want to see a, you know, do a video with Snow. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe if you guys tell him you want to see that enough, he might do it. But uh, I don't figure he's going to make time. Uh, I don't figure he's got time to, uh, you know, go rummy sale and do stuff like that with me. He's got a lot of bigger fish to fry. Okay, let's see here, though. Um, a little behind in the comments here. So I hope that answers your question, Willis. Uh, Go hit up Froggy's channel. Tell him you want to see him do another collab with, him, with me. We, we offered him to go to the Tractor Ninja show with us last year. He could have been with me when I found all that Spider-Man stuff. That would have made a great video for both of us. Uh, both of us. Both of us. But um, uh, I think he said he had he was making a trip to Kentucky that week. So, um, yeah, hit up his channel. Just tell him you want to see another video with me. And, yeah, that's about the only way I can tell you to get it to happen. What else we got going on here? Nathan Stevens says, yo, bro. Thought I missed you Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. Oh, um, Monday when I was on with the Pick and Preacher. Is that what you're talking about, Nathan Stevens? Uh, Imasa says, it is true, Froggy is actually a drawer, and he uses CGI videos to, to make him taller. <laughs> no. I, I don't I, no, I don't think Froggy uses CGI videos to make him taller. Uh, he says, you are way better than Froggy, by the way. He ain't the host with the most. <clears throat> I, it, it's not really a competition. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Froggy's Froggy's fans love him for his their reasonings, and, and our viewers love us for our, their uh, their reasons. You know, it's it's not really about who's better than the other. Uh, Froggy just happens to have a bigger following. That's that's you know. Let's see. I say he says you're probably far more relatable in that way. Love both channels, obviously. We well, yeah. It's that's that's the thing. That's what me and Miss Cat discussed. We all we want to do is we want to stay relatable. That's what you know. That's what drew me into watching these videos to begin with. Watching people like the Cincinnati Picker and, and stuff like that. I was like, well, first and foremost, I'm not the only one who was doing this. You know, but now then these guys have made it okay to put it online. Um, but uh, some people, want, you know, I want to stay relatable to the common guy, to the guy who's got $10 or $15 or $20 and you want to go to a rubbish cell and find something cool to put on your, sh on your shelf. That's where we want to stay relatable to. We keep the stuff that's bought for strictly for resale purposes. Like I can use like them uh, automotive instrument gauges I just picked up in a video back. Um, I can use those for example. We try to pick, keep that stuff to a minimum on this channel. We want to pick up only just the coolest pop culture and nostalgia stuff, the same stuff that Froggy picks up, but we want to do it on the budget. We want to show everybody that they can do it on the budget and that you don't have to have $1,500 to get at a toy show to come away with, you know, a, you know, a couple of grails. I mean, like that Optimus Prime, for instance, that's a $600 toy. I got it for five bucks. That's where we want to stay. That's what, that's what our focus for the channel is. So it's not a competition. It's not really about who's better. Um, it's... It, it's just it's about what kind of content you like. Do you want to see the rare, high end, you know, thousand dollar buys that Froggy provides, or do you want to see somebody who's out here digging? Not just me. You know, there's a lot of us out here digging in the trenches. You know, it's just a, it's, it's it's a preference of the content you like. What else we got going on out here? Uh, Willis Ritchie says I got y'all comment on his channel. Yeah, I mean, it, it never hurts. He's got my number and I got his and like I said we've we've talked and I'm sure I'll bump into him because I me and Miss Cat are intending to go to his toy show. We're not gonna set up there because we're saving up all of our setup for uh, um, Retro Rex. We're saving all of our cool stuff to take to that, but uh, we're definitely gonna go check out his toy show. So let's see what's here. 
Uh, he says, you're too humble. It's okay to say you got fans. Well, I don't call them fans. It's like, uh, I, I prefer the term viewers. I'm not, it's like I watch these other people. I watch other resellers, and I wouldn't. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of theirs. I would say, you know, I wouldn't. I don't look at them in the same level as I would like a fan of music or a fan of an actor. But uh, I prefer. But I guess uh, there's some level of humbleness there. Let's see what we got here. Brandon Archer says I found a really cool Jordan jersey. Where did you find? Oh, where'd you find that at? I'm always interested hearing about some really cool jerseys being found. I just snagged me one on Poshmark today. I got me a Alonzo Morning one on Poshmark for $10 plus tax and shipping. Champion jersey, size 48. It's an upgrade to my collection, so I get to pull one out and make a little money. Love finding jerseys. Um, Roger Door says, thanks for the awesome comment. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. We try our best to put out um, <clears throat> try to put out the best of the best comment, uh, content. <clears throat> Uh, Nathan Stevens says, J just a total thought, but would you come to Naples, Florida to make a video if I financed a trip and gave you buy money to get items? <laughs> um, yeah, we probably would. We've actually considered making a trip to Florida. We was, it, was, it, was on the, it was a goal to make it to Peaches the Beaches. Uh, we considered trying to do it last year, and it just wasn't feasible. And then this year, it crept up on us, and you know, we had some other things going on. We were saving for some other stuff, but... Uh, yeah, we definitely like to come down there and go picking around Florida. That'd be for sure. that'd be cool. And we got some other people down there. Like we would like try to link up with the Gulf Coast pickers. And I know there's a lot of pickers in Florida, but uh, they're all in their own little cliques. We're we're affiliated with the Gulf Coast pickers, so I'd definitely try to link up with them too. You get yourself a hell of a video, probably. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. Brandon Archer says I'll send you a pic on Instagram. All right, cool. I'll check it out. Let's see. Um... I understand. Uh, don't do it. My cousin Ray lost a kidney in 03 that way. If I survive prison, I think I can. I'll be all right. I didn't. I didn't get nothing taken from me there. So, uh, Willie, Willis Richie says, I understand. I found a Miss Elizabeth autograph for 25 bucks, and it is and it is real and worth a lot more than what I paid. That would be awesome. You know, especially since you know her passing. Um, yeah. And 25 bucks is a steal. I couldn't believe. I'd, I'd run across a Roman Reigns autograph here not too long ago. I couldn't believe what even some of these newer I, what wrestling autographs were bringing. I was shocked. Uh, he says, all my friends are shoulder deep in kids. So bored. Would love to hang out with a YouTube star. Hey, we ever got down there, we could hang out. We That's for sure. I don't know how entertaining we'd be. Me and Miss Cat are pretty... Uh, uh, we're pretty laser focused, especially when we're doing uh, yard sale content. We're we're, we're strict. Uh, that's that's the term right there. Strictly business. Uh, but behind the scenes, we're a lot of fun. But we definitely want to come and pick Florida because you guys got lucky down that way. You got you guys got. And I guess if I've been seeing from Rod and picking and punching, he's down that way, and Faya Benda. They're all talking like your guys' season is starting up right now. Your rummage sale season is just now starting. That's an, that's that's cool. Um, it'd be nice to have a place up there, up here and down there, and then you know go down there for the winter, and then um, he said we just chill. And said, okay, we just chill. I regret not saying I wanted the Roman Reigns, but I'm off and on with wrestling sometimes, and that was a time I was off. That's my oldest son in the comments there. Uh, he had a chance of getting that Roman Reigns autograph, had a Roman Reigns vest. Uh, you know, I bought a... I knew what you meant, Nathan. I knew it meant chill. <laughs> but, yeah, I found a Roman Reigns autograph, and it had, came with a vest, and it came with an autograph, and it came with some chain, some necklace of his, and I it got it pretty cheap. I couldn't believe what wrestling autographs were bringing even newer wrestlers, so that was, that was shocking. I didn't believe that there was that much of a market for uh, wrestling autographs, but there is, so... And he has Shawn Michaels autograph since we're on the subject. Nathan Stevens says, I was a dirty country boy. <laughs> That's what it is around here. A bunch of dirty country. We live right in the middle of a cornfield. Quite literally. <laughs> we got a field on this side and a field behind us. And we have a barn back here. We got goats and uh, chickens and everything running around. He says, now I have a stroller for my two dogs and listen to house music. Well, I used to say something similar to that. I went from Dr. Dre to Dr. Seuss. <laughs> it's amazing how things change when you go over and kids change you. And 
adulting changes yet. Um, me and Miss Cat, we're trying our best to hold on to it though. You know, you're 38. I'll be 38 years old, and she'll be 35, and we're going to Comic Con dressed as uh, Jesse and James on the 22nd. So, and last year we was Casey and April. We're trying to stay young. You know, they say you're as young as you feel. My cousin Ray Ray says his son's mama has a trailer in Florida you can stay at if you don't mind doing some work in the trailer while you're there. I know. I think we'll we'll get an Airbnb, <laughs> probably. Let our channel blow up. That's that's the deal. When the channel blows up, we'll be going to a lot of places to pick. We'll be going to a lot of different areas. Because you're not the uh, Nathan Steven, You're not the first to have asked this. There's been there's been smaller YouTube channels and stuff has reached out. Hey, if you ever get to Iowa. Hey, if you ever get to uh, where's that Plains of Profit at? Um, you know, you ever get out that area? You ever get around New York? You know, you ever get in Philadelphia? You know, hit us up. So we definitely love to do that. It's just you know, uh, trips like that take a lot of money. You know, it takes a lot of financing. And you had then you have then it takes away from your 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 finds. That's my thing. Um, we're so niche down in what we find and we're and what we can spend and what we look for that you, we have to sell a lot of it to pay for the expensive trip before we can start keeping things for free and then before we can start making money, you know, making profit. So um, definitely more trips will be on the horizon. But he said drove to Tennessee a few times. Snow the longest drive ever was driving through Indiana to get to Tennessee. <laughs> Indiana's not a bad drive through if you, uh, like, on the 127s. Like, I I go, you know, we cover, me and Miss Cat cover a big, a big, well, not, not in Indiana, I guess. We're, we run the state line between Indiana and Ohio on the 127s, but, yeah, I guess you're right. It would be a long drive. <laughs> a 70, I guess. 70 goes nearly the full length width across the state. That's a rough one. Nathan Stevens says, I'm 46 in the West 40. We have property management company. And five for five to fifty million dollar homes. Wow, I, I, that's, that's that's doing it right there. So if you got a property management company, that you mean you guys got to pay somebody to come in and clean out the place whenever? Uh, you know, I asked that because I know there's some people I've met that you know have rental companies or property management companies, and when people move out or leave, they have to hire somebody to come in and uh, take uh, take all the stuff out. And I've always I've I've met some pickers who uh, find some good stuff that people just leave behind in their homes in the rental company or the uh, whomever tells, hey, just clean it all out. Let's get what we're going here. It says, fully remodeled our house. You have a guest room with your own bathroom. Huh? Well, I'm going to have to run it by Miss Cat. Sorry, guys. I lost the live chat here. There we go. Usually, I'm not doing double duty. Usually, Miss Cat's got the tablet over here, and she's reading the comments, and uh, I'm reading them up here as they pop off, but we are uh, 73 minutes in. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it the full two hours. Getting a little, getting a little tired here. Getting a little uh, droopy-eyed. Uh, Sean Leonard says, I enjoy your content and watching your channel grow. I've been following you before you had 1,000 subs. Keep it up. Hey, that's... Uh, I appreciate that you got you one that you're part of that original that original group to come over before I had a thousand subs. Um, yeah, we we're we're excited with the growth of our channel too. It's 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 kind of stalled out on us here. It's like once we hit five thousand, it was pretty good for a little while, and we jumped up to twenty two hundred. I mean fifty two hundred pretty quick, and then this climb from fifty two hundred to fifty three hundred has just been brutal. And YouTube's not pushing the videos like they were, you know. I mean, we're still getting over a thousand views in the first twenty-four hours, which is what I now hold myself to. That's like that's like the standard. But it's like once we get to around fifteen hundred, thirteen hundred, seventeen, eighteen hundred views, then the video fizzles out, and it's like I don't understand. I'm reading the analytics, and our whole video is a top moment. We having a fifty-three, fifty-six percent retention rate, and uh, I don't know. Apparently, the algorithm's screwing with other people too. I seen uh, that Gulf Coast Pickers had posted the other night on Instagram that their YouTube wasn't pushing their movies. I mean, pushing their videos. So we're trying. We I I want to get fifteen thousand is the goal. Is where I want it. Where I'm hoping to get sooner rather than later. But then ultimately, we want to get that that silver plaque. What else we got here? He said the garage sales down here are good. Most of states most of states run garage sales to clear houses. Uh, that's cool. The church sales are crazy good. When neighbors have community sales, it's hot too. Yeah, I see a lot of I see a lot of the pickers from Florida. A lot of the 
picking down there is pretty decent. But the problem is, is what I've seen is me and Miss Cat had discussed moving to Florida. There was a discussion that we're like if we was to not stay where we're at and if we was to go anywhere, where would we go? And there was two options. We was going to move closer to Ohio, uh, to Lebanon, so we could be closer to the Mojo crew. Or we considered completely moving to Florida because, first and foremost, we like your governor. And secondly, is because the yard sales are year-round. But then the more YouTube I watch, I know that there's the Florida Pickers are down there. I know that Rod from Picking and Punching is down there. I know the Philly Flipper is down there. The Picking Gila is down there. Uh, Gulf Coast Pickers is down there. Um, and ADH Dave, Faya Benda. You start talking, that is a ton of competition. So that really, that really hampered our decision on if we was to move anywhere from Indiana right now, we'd be moving closer to the Mojo crew uh, just simply because there is entirely too much competition in Florida. Uh, Sean Leonard says, are you on any other platforms? The sub button on YouTube is broke too. Um, hmm. Well, uh, we are, I'm on Instagram. G-O-G-O -O underscore S-N-O. Uh, same thing goes for TikTok. Um, those are the platforms I utilize. We use TikTok, whatnot, Instagram. Um, Nathan Steve says, you need to add keywords in videos that will draw from other searches. I mean, I have keywords in, in the description, uh, a whole list of them. Um, maybe I'm not doing that right. Uh, I, I try to... Um, I try to use the, how I say it, I try to keep the, the title vague. That's what Froggy had told me to do as a tip. He says, try to keep the title vague. You know, I try to use the word garage sale. I try to use, you know, whatever word is trending usually, which is garage sale and yard sale. When I look at my analytics, the, the number one search term that brings me up is, other than my name and other than Froggy Flips' video, is garage sale. So, uh, maybe I'm just not doing it right. I don't know. He said, "Have you seen the new? Uh, have you seen pics for the new Crow movie with Bill Skarsgård? Looks shitty. You cannot make that movie magic." Brandon Lee had, yeah, I saw the pictures and I was like, I can't. I knew it was coming because it was never off limits when they done Crow Two, City of Angels. Apparently, they didn't learn their lesson then. Um, some things, some roles aren't just, are just not meant to be tampered with, and then Hollywood just don't get it. You know, it's like nobody can play that role like Brandon Lee did. Nobody's and, and it's forever going to be overshadowed by the fact that he died playing that, making that role, and so any movie that's trying to even copy that is screwed from Jump Street. Especially in my generation, it's like we already know it can't be done. It's just a shameless grab for money. So anyway, uh, Vinny Sportsfoot says there is year-round picking down there, but I think I think better older stuff is up here. Absolutely. Well, because by the time you get down there, you got to think about, you know, most people's retired down to Florida, and most of them are retired couples, you know, church sales, retirement communities, stuff like that. They've gotten rid of their old, old junk, and they've consolidated and moved to Florida, you know. So, I mean, it's cool if you're finding, if you're needing pots and pans, you're buying tchotchkes or um, DVD VCR combos or that stuff, but you, uh, um, I don't think the picking for us, me and Miss Cat down there, would be very good. Miss Cat said it the other day, you know, she's like, we've niched ourselves down so much that she believed, you know, that, that I don't, if other pickers that had niche, have niched themselves down to the niches that me and Cat have, I don't think they'd have enough footage to put out their videos, to be honest with you. But it's hard to say that without sounding arrogant. All right. Nathan Steve says, like, if you did Naples video, everyone searching anything Naples would bring your video up. Hmm. Okay. Alright, I have to start looking at something like that. Uh, Nathan Steve says, agree. Crow can't be copied. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, you can't, it can't be done. It's like they tried to remake Fright Night, which was a god-awful decision. They didn't learn their lesson from the sequel, which was bad, but it was... Yeah. But then they try to remake it, and then they bring in the worst guy for a remake, which is Colin Farrell, and they just completely destroy it. It's like some things just aren't meant to be messed with. You don't... You, like, you don't try to remake Stairway to Heaven. All right, now. Sean Leonard says, yeah, keywords and thumbnails. Mr. Beast has a good breakdown of how-to on the Rogan podcast he did. All right, I have to check out. I do watch Joe Rogan, so I have to check out Mr. Beast's episode on there. Um, I, I'm trying my... Um, I'm trying my best to, with the thumbnails. Miss Cat makes the thumbnails. YouTube sends me analytics and sends me tips and pointers on how to do thumbnails. Um, you guys are the viewers. 
do you see anything wrong with my thumbnails? Could they be better? Um, I usually I usually select the picture of the thumbnail and usually come up with whatever words on it, and then I just tell Kat just to, to make it look good, and she does it. So let me know if you guys think I should do the thumbnails any differently. Um, I'm not one of them ones. I tried that, you know, whole posing and having the picture of me or Miss Cat on the thumbnail like everybody's. Well, there's a few people doing now, and I, I, I don't like that. So, but if it would help, I guess I, I'd try it again. What else we got here? I saw the best idea ever for acquiring vintage anything. Trade guns for it. All bros want guns. Lots of bros have toys in the attic. Uh, yeah, but I have a felony and I, I have a felony and I can't have a gun in my possession in any way, shape, or form. So that um, that won't work. Um, Nathan Steve says the editing is tight. Uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm getting better, getting better. Uh, if you haven't been, I don't think you've been in here since we were talking about Comic Con. But this video coming up, we got coming up for Comic Con. I'm gonna do some, try some really, really cool editing stuff and try to give you guys like a next level video. That me and Miss Cat have talked, and we think that if there's any chance that one one video has a chance of going viral, this may be the one. Because our other Comic Con video did eight, nine thousand views, and it wasn't even very good. Now that I have the concept down, how to edit, do montages, and the flow of a video, I'm going to make it really, really good. All right, JP says, "Let us know, wife on the way home. Nice stream, man. Happy hunting. Hey, all right. Enjoy your time with the wifey. Thanks for stopping in and keeping the conversation going, JP. You had some good questions." Um, nah, don't do the goofy weird pics with the mouth open. Haha, ha, that's cringe. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Me and Kat tried that a little bit. And then we dis we discussed, like, well, maybe Miss Kat's like, well, maybe you should put me in the thumbnails. But it's like, you know, <laughs> can we, it's like, you can exploit my look, she says. And I, you know, and I know Miss Kat's a beautiful woman and she's attractive. And I know it's the reason why a lot of people ask, but I don't, you know, I feel like the content itself should. You know, and people are watching other pickers who don't have as good a content. And they're not putting their ladies in their thumbnails. So I don't feel like I should have to. But I'm like I said, I'm open to uh, any suggestions. Let's see here. Sean Larry says she's not the one for sale. That's right. See. <laughs> Nathan seriously, Nathan Nathan Steven says seriously though it doesn't look chopped up. Ah, um. So I put a lot of work into it. And if you go back to me, I don't know how long you've been around, uh, but if you go back to our early footage, our early videos were kind of choppy and kind of janky until I started to get the hang of it. Uh, you can see it. You can clearly see a progression of when I started to where I am now. And it's just going to keep getting better because I use a, an app called InShot. And um, they, had, they post little shorts every couple of days on all different kinds of editing tricks. So I'm always adding stuff to my bag. And then, like I said, I watch The Pick and Preacher. If you guys like good edits, go check out Keith. He's uh, he's fun to watch. Um, Sean Larson, how long have you been collecting? I've been collecting off and on since 2011. Um, I went through a my first, I went through a divorce and then managed to keep a big chunk of the stuff, as you guys seen, you know, I pulled out the camper. And then uh, me and Miss Cat got together in 2016. And we've been, we was... Uh, uh, she didn't really get into the collecting with me until within the last, you know, couple, two or three years. But, um, yeah, I've been doing it off and on for about 13 years. And I was doing it before it was cool. That's how I ended up with a lot of this stuff. You know, that's how you end up with boxed N64 games and boxed Super Nintendo games if you didn't have the foresight to save them as a kid. Uh, I, in the early days of Facebook Marketplace, I was doing what was called an ISO, In Search Of Ad. And I basically I took a countertop full of stuff. I had glass box video games, some vintage toys. I took a picture. I kept this picture. It's in my phone. I've kept it for years. Um, and I just posted it on Facebook Marketplace. And this picture it said, ISO, in search of. These are the things I'm looking for, willing to pay cash. And you'd be surprised how many people hit me up in the early days of Facebook Marketplace and brought a bunch of stuff to me. I bought a, a, a Nintendo in the box, the one that I sold the Froggy Flips. I bought that in the box for 60 bucks from a guy way back when. Uh, Pokemon cards, Game Boy stuff. You'd be surprised how much that stuff I got brought to me just by doing ISO ads. And I used to do it on Craigslist and stuff too when that was a thing, but... All right. Uh, Sean, um, Nathan Stevens says, keep, keep things on content for sure. People watch these videos want to a happy, wholesome couple. <laughs> yeah. We try... We try to be a happy, wholesome couple. 
With, we we got a little edge to us though. I mean, if like you've seen the if you've seen the uh, one video um, uh, at the end of Valentine's Day, we 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 keep it a little edgy. Or the uh, the Christmas video when she was bouncing up and down on my lap. But yeah, we're a pretty we're a pretty average couple. What else we got going on here? Uh, I kick myself in the ass every day with all the toys I tossed out throughout the years of moving. It makes me cry. Oh yeah. That's what triggered it with me. It was uh, trying to get back a lot of the childhood toys that I had or toys that I wanted when I was a kid and I, my parents wouldn't get me. That's what started it all. Uh, Willis Ritchie says, what's your holy grail find? There's a few. Um, definitely would like to find a Scratch the Cat. Miss Cat and I have been on the lookout for that for a while. Hot Spot is another one. Um, and Half Court Giraffe. Th those would be my grails in the Ninja Turtles category. Um, we have grails in all different categories. That's the thing, so... But yeah, Scratch the Cat would come off as probably, or Hot Spot are my top two. And then from like the Toxic Crusaders line, Cat wants uh, Bonehead and I want Psycho. Um, there's a, oh, there's a new one that just got added to the grail list for Pokemon. Um, there, they did a 10th anniversary Pokemon pack that had Ash fighting Team Rocket. And of course me and Cat love Team Rocket. Um, so we want this set, but it, they're going for like two hundred and fifty to three hundred and sixty dollars, and that's like, like that's not a stealing deal. And you know the odds of finding that out there in the wild are slim and none. But it's definitely on the grail list, you know. What else we got here? Um, Nathan Steven says my dad got pissed and tossed multiple bins of good toys years ago. Let's see, I got lucky. My parents held on to most of my toys, and uh, so I lucked out there. Uh, but most of my toys were well loved. I mean, I, we played with our toys. I beat up a lot of them. Um, let's see right here. And my and hell, even my mom held on to vintage clothes and stuff. Like we've got like the Super Mario Brothers movie from '93. We've got one of those vintage shirts that from when I was a kid, and vintage Power Ranger shirts. And my mom held on to everything, so it's kind of lucky. Uh, what didn't survive was like my. Like, I had a lot of Allen Iverson rookie cards, a lot of Kobe Bryant rookie cards. I had some Friday the 13th variant cover comic books that I can't even find now um, that I had sold when I was a teenager, when I, whether I needed gas money or a pack of cigarettes or whatever. That's the stuff that'll haunt me, um, especially the Kobe Bryant rookie cards. I had a stack of them. Let's see here. Joe Ellen pay. Uh, Joe Ellen says, "Hey Snow, you're having. I hope you're having a great day. Hey, we're having a blast here. Kind of bored without Miss Cat, but you guys are keeping me company. Uh, Joe Ellen, she's our she's our biggest fan. She comments on every video. Uh, glad to see you made it to the live tonight. Um, Sean Leonard, is there ways to get a hold of you if someone wants to reach out for buys and trades? Yeah, we have a we have an email in the description. That's that's usually for collaborations or." Um, uh, promotions, but we actually had somebody reach out on there today, another viewer of the channel, and he's a pretty loyal viewer. Um, he wanted to buy that Boston Celtics hat I just found in the last video, and I quoted him a price, and we worked it out, and he bought it, and I'm shipping it out. Um, I would tell you to get a hold of me on Instagram first. That's the easier way, but if you do have something you saw and you want to buy from me, you can hit me up on Instagram or you can hit me up in the, on that email in the description. And there's a link to my eBay store, so there might be a chance it's even in the eBay store. Or um, if it's clothing, there's a link to the Poshmark store, and that's and everything's listed in there. Um, what toys being made now will be collectibles in the future? You know, we've speculated on that, and I don't know that there will be, to be honest with you. Me and Miss Cass talked about it. It's like, do we want to invest in some of this newer stuff? Because we have some of the NECA Ninja Turtle stuff that's coming up in a new video, come up in a future video, but we didn't buy it from the store. Um, we're starting to feel like that they're overproducing these, you know, these new Turtles figures or mass producing these new Ghostbusters figures and stuff like that. And they're they're producing enough of it for the parents and for the kids because they now know that they're appealing to. Uh, um, two different generations. So I think that they're going to produce the value out of it. And even stuff that's supposed to... In, unless you're buying limited edition collectibles, it's going to go the way of the ball card. That's exactly what's going to happen. In my day, you, all these it used to be if you had a shiny, really shiny, fancy card, that was an insert card, and it was worth a little more than the rest of them. Nowadays, all, all the cards are shiny, and all of them look like insert cards, and it ain't worth nothing if it don't have that little one of 150 or two of 2,000. 
So what's going to happen is they're going to overproduce the toys to the point where there's not going to be any market. I believe that this right here, this was the newest and last turtle set I collected right here. This was, um, I can't remember what year this, this stuff was from. I think this is like the 2013 uh, Turtles. I bought a whole bunch of this on short, like I bought figures I knew that were short packed. Casey Jones, um, Monkey Brains, Karai Serpent, and I bought all those no, uh, anticipating that they would go up, and they have. I bought doubles, a whole bunch of doubles like this Casey Jones, for instance. These are I paid 10 bucks for them in the store. They're going for 30 40 50 bucks online now. But I do believe that this would be the last run of Turtles that will be worth any money. Um, and then aside from that, kids, my kid, like my son's age, Jalen, I'm not saying him, but kids his age and, you know, younger, they don't care about collectibles and they had nothing to be nostalgic about, you know, anymore. What are they going to be nostalgic about? Their first iPhone or their first iPod? You know, most kids, like, don't even play with, most kids don't even play with toys. So, yeah, that's where we're at with it. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right. Pass on through the Midwest, Iowa. Let's go 22. Always skid it. Uh, pass through the Midwest, Iowa. Let's go 22. Oh, you must be talking about Clay uh, Caitlin Clark. I'm a big fan of Caitlin Clark. If that's what you're talking about. Love to see her play. Me and Kat was talking about her the other night. Okay. Uh, um, I per uh, Nathan Steve says, I personally don't think any modern toys will be as popular as the box 80s toys. Um, yeah. I, like I said, I stopped at the 2013 Turtles. I don't foresee it getting any better than that. Okay. Um, Joel says, glad I could be here also. Yep, we're glad to have you. Let's see what else. Nathan, Nathan Steve says, I still check out Goodwill when I can. I had a cool find. A deck of cards from the Japanese airlines made by Nintendo. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, uh, vintage deck of the Nintendo cards. Yeah. I, uh... As a vintage video game collector, I'd like to see a set of those sitting on my shelf too. Um, if you, but most people don't even know that Nintendo made uh, playing cards before they made video games. They dabbled in a few markets, as a matter of fact. Um, yeah, and even in the playing card market, they about didn't make it in in Japan because each family only bought one deck, and that's all they really needed. So. You know, they had got the American uh, market, and that's where Nintendo made a bunch of their money on their playing cards. But let's see here. Sh uh, Sean Leonard said, It was cool seeing you at Retro Rick's store. He seems like a cool dude. Yeah, Retro Rick's, he's, he's as advertised. He's cool. He's humble. He said he took us up to his office. Uh, things weren't going well. Uh, we crashed his computer like two or three times. So when we were supposed to only be there for like a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour at most, we was there for two and a half, almost three hours because it was such a big trade we took in there to him and he was trying to process that trade and we crashed his, his system like twice. But uh, yeah, RetroRick's great. His store is great. He was welcoming. Like I said, me and Miss Cat wouldn't be making a nine-hour trip to Arkansas and packing a big chunk of our inventory and going down there to set up at his convention if we didn't think he was a cool dude and we didn't think it was, you know, we wouldn't feel welcome, you know. So that's that's our goal. And Retro Rick is as advertised. The person you see in the videos is who he is. So he's cool. Let's see here. Good luck seeing a home game. She sells out more than the men. Uh, yeah. But fortunately for me, we're talking about she's talking about Caitlin. Car we're talking about Caitlin Clark here in the comments. She's a female basketball player, plays for Iowa. If you don't know, uh, but fortunately for me, I live in Indiana, and she has declared herself uh, for the WNBA draft. And Indiana has the number one pick, so I might get a chance to see her, you know, pretty easily. We'll see. Uh, Imasta says, I need to call out of work because I accidentally pooped my pants. I don't have to, and I don't have any more uniform pants. Well, that's a, that's a good reason to call off. If you, uh, if you've soiled your drawers, that's a good reason to call off. Pablo Esco says, what's good? What's up, Pablo? We're just hanging out in here. We've got 23 people in here on a Wednesday night. So let's go snow. I'm I'm kind of disappointed. We was hoping to see Donnie the Chico, and he hasn't stopped in yet. And we only got like 26 minutes left of this live. He says they keep working in disgrace. Who are we talking about? The WNBA? <laughs> we 
Well, I can only imagine what's going to happen when you get Caitlin Clark to the WNBA and then Angel Reese um, from LSU. I can already foresee that, like a Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark rivalry in the WNBA. And truth be told, that's exactly what the WNBA needs. They need something to bring the fans in. And it's not even a race rivalry thing. It was like, you know, two most exciting players. And, you know... All right, let's see here. Nathan Stevens says, Gotta go, bro. Always good hanging out. Let's talk about the trip in the future. I'd be down to invest 1500 So would love to make a couple of really great videos. Yeah, uh, hit me up on Instagram. That's the best way to hammer out those kind of details. And uh, we'll go from there. What else we got here? Um, in Boston, oops, sorry. That was supposed to be a text. My boss only, okay. Sean Larry said, Do you play, Did you play sports growing up? Oh, yeah. I played uh, football. Oh, I played baseball. Uh, for a couple seasons, I played football for a season or two, and then I, uh, I was, I've always played basketball, and uh, I can, can, I can play soccer if I want to, I can, uh, I can play shit out of hacky sack, but I'm a basketball player, and even at my age, I still go to the gym, and these dudes, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, I bust their ass all the time, they still can't figure out how I'm doing it, I'm old, and I'm short, and I'm white, and I can still bust their ass. What else we got here? Uh, Servi Abel says she's a shooter, period. Oh, yeah, she's a, she's a shooter, all right. A BMX guy back in the day. Absolutely, yeah. All my friends were BMX guys. Uh, that was the one thing where I... That was one of the few things I never did get that I wanted to get. My dad bought me a really good BMX bike. I can't complain. He bought me a really expensive BMX bike, but it wasn't the one that everybody else had around here. You know, uh, my friends had the... Um, think what was it um oh dang it just slipped my mind gts sorry about that my friends had gts um which was the big thing they were five there it is sean leonard knows yeah that my friends had gts and you know the one and then the other then one other friend of mine had a haro um but um i had i was the unlucky one that ended up with a diamondback i had a diamondback viper uh dino was a good one but GT was where it was at. Now, to this day, I, I've seen resellers pick up Dino. Uh, see, I had a Diamondback. I had a Diamondback Viper. And then I had a Mr. Lucky for a while. Uh, Mr. Lucky was completely useless as a stunt bike because it was too damn heavy. But the Viper was nice. But I always wanted a GT or a Dino. I've seen some resellers pick them up on YouTube. And, man, I cannot believe what some of them bikes are bring. I'm hoping I find one someday. <laughs> Uh, out in the wild, because I've, I've always told Cat, like, man, I'd like to get me one of those, but I don't even ride bike no more, so I don't know why. I have a lowrider, like an actual lowrider brand bicycle in my mom's garage that I I restored and then never rode it, and now it's all deteriorated down again. It's uh, green with gold rims and the steering wheel, the chain link steering wheel in the middle and the banana seat. It's crazy. Um, all righty. Uh, Vinny Sports Flip says he's got to go. Yeah, he's uh, he's dipping out. Vinny Sports Flip's got a show on his channel tonight. Um, if, you, if you're so inclined, you can dip out of here and go check out his show. So check out Keith, Vinny Sports Flips. Um, uh, says, ain't nothing wrong with a dime back. Yeah, I know, but it was just, you know... I, all my friends had GTs and dinos, and you know, to me, the Diamondback was like, well, I would say it was barely, it's barely top five. You, you probably go, you probably go GT, Haro, Dino, all those are arguably top one anyway. And then you would go like uh, a Hoffman or a Kagi Rog, and then, then maybe a, 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 the DC General Lee. You might Diamondback might be top ten if if that. Okay, let's see. What else here? GT with the three-peak piece crank was revolutionary. And the gyro handlebars. Yeah, that was the one thing I didn't like about um, the gyro. I mean, about the Diamondback Viper I had. didn't have the gyro on it. Um, all my friends had the, you know, the GTs had the, the, had the gyro. But yeah, the three-piece crank. Okay, so he's a big-time collector of history BMX here in my hometown, Iowa. He said, that's your friends. <laughs> Hey, the, the uh, American Pickers are from Iowa, LeClaire, Iowa, whatever it is. You ever, you ever get up around their, their store? Actually, I had a, I just found a, an old school 70s Schwinn, like, 
or it might have been early eighties, like BMX frame at a rummage sale here not too long ago. Well, last season, me and but me and Cat left it behind because we decided it was going to be too much to uh, sh it was going to be too much of a pain to try to ship. Uh, he said, "Oh shit, old school Huffy back in the late nineties. I had a Huffy Pulsar in the early nineties that my friend that my parents had got me as a kid, and that was a, that was a great bike, and it had the Skyway black mags on it." Um, Always thought that they should use mags on more bikes, uh, especially like the Huffy Pulsar. If you ever seen the Huffy Pulsar, and check out the, what the mags look like on those. Them things were awesome. What we got here? He says, uh, those got hot. Um, he says, the master said, my, my cousin claims she went to Olive Garden with him and he was a busboy there. Uh, I must have missed something. You think if I asked Caitlin on a date, she would say yes? I don't know if Caitlyn would say yes or not. I know that I think she got a boyfriend, Caitlyn Clark. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Sean Lair says uh, these new big wheel bikes is all you see now. Kids just ride wheelies and trying to get hit by cars. Haha, <laughs> yeah. And the mags are hella heavy though. Oh yeah, I know. But uh, they, 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 you just couldn't get past the look of them. Uh, you know, I know a lot of guys who are purists that would ride nothing but spokes, but I like the mags myself too. Come reach out to me, you and Kat. We might be able to link any, anyways. Mags are sick. Yeah, if we ever get up that way, we can try to link up with you. Uh, um, He says she's got a good BF. Okay, so Caitlin Clark's got a boyfriend. All right. I thought she did. Which, that's shocking in and of itself because a lot you be like a lot of them WNBA players are, uh, you know, they're lesbians. So I was surprised... Even by the fact that Caitlin Clark had a boyfriend. Okay, we are down. We're getting down here to about the last uh, last 19, 20 minutes. He said I might have some nice moto mags for trade. You come trade. I don't have anything to trade. I don't have any BMX bikes of this stuff at this point. And Masa says, are you that swinger, that singer from Swinging Richard's Lounge? <laughs> I don't know, uh, Sir v. Abel, are you the singer from Swinging Richard's Lounge? That's that's the question going on in the comments right now. I always leave it to, uh, your, sh uh, your shelves look like they got new stuff. No, they don't have any new stuff. Not really. Um... I'm trying to think. I did put the only thing I put new out here is down here on the bottom shelf. This has been sitting in the dusty. It's been sitting around on a dusty shelf in the bedroom for a long time. This is that uh, Optimus Prime G1 I got in the. Uh, I got at a rummy sale for five bucks or something like that, and uh, way back early on. Um, it's a video called Opt Optimus Prime Finds, and it's crazy because <clears throat> that video don't get the love it should. You know, I found this Optimus Prime G1 for five bucks, and that video didn't do the greatest. So go back to my backlog, scroll all the way down, and check out Optimus Prime finds. That's the that's the newest thing I've added to the shelf here lately. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Rest of it's the same old stuff. Let's see what we got else going on in here. He says, I do games and toys. You want to know? Life I'm okay. Uh, what would you say is the most valuable item in your collection that you didn't think would would grow in price over time. Your corner looking crazy. I thought you looked familiar, and I am a fan. Okay, um, hmm. Most valuable item in my collection. Well, now it's probably the Alien, my 79 Kenner Alien. Um, as far as stuff that's grown in price, a lot would be the video games, but actually they've dropped off in price again here lately. Uh, prices of collectibles go up and down, but the thing with the collectibles thing is, uh, most of the old collectibles will never lose value. Um, I haven't seen a lot of increase in value in most anything I have, but I've, most of us never lost anything. Like the aliens, pretty much stayed consistently worth between six and nine hundred. He's never really changed. He was worth that when I found him. Um, so, and that was way back when. Uh, so be able to say your corner's looking good. Yeah, well, we try to keep it looking good. We've got another, we're got that whole other wall over here. We plan to hopefully uh, do that up too. Miss Cat wants to get a couple more shelves and she's going to have her own shelf. And we're, our goal is now we are going to focus on our Pokemon shelf. We, we'd like to expand our Pokemon shelf. Miss Cat wants to have her own, uh, you know, uh, her own female girly shelf, which is cool. Uh, we're going to make sure we make that happen. Uh, he said, I need a pair of playoff 12s and an 11 or 12. Playoff 12s. 
I got a couple pair of 12s, but I don't have the playoffs. I got a pair of Phoebus. I got a pair of uh, Taxis and uh, a pair of the um, Satins. They're in my Poshmark closet. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, the surge of COVID changed things a lot, too. Um, well, the thing with COVID that changed everything, it, it changed not it changed video games, it changed collectibles, and it changed even changed clothing. That's something I've noticed here lately is that uh, clothing prices have started to come down. Nobody's paying the big price for the NASCAR shirts anymore. Um, the band the band tees are coming down quite substantially. You know, uh, yeah, COVID really because people were home, they were bored, they had nothing to do. Oh, I want this Aussie shirt that I had when I was a kid, and you know, it's one hundred and ninety nine dollars now. It's you know eighty nine ninety nine. So yeah, um, COVID really screwed things up. It, and it gave people an overhyped sense of value on a lot of their stuff. Um, I fortunately I wasn't doing a lot of buying during the COVID time. Um, I was on house arrest, so and so Cat was going out and hitting thrift stores for me, and Mom was going out and hitting thrift stores for me, and I was buying stuff on Poshmark, I, which I've continuously done my whole career. I've sourced off Poshmark, so uh, yeah, COVID really changed a lot of things. I actually kind of wish now I would have sold more during that period of time for those higher prices. Um, but hindsight's twenty twenty. A lot of the stuff I was trying to get max profit out of, and then I, I held on to it to the point where the bottom dropped out of it. But like everything else, it goes in cycles and it comes in phases. Um, what's not be, like Tommy Big Flag, Tommy Hilfiger stuff was bringing stupid money back the, uh, a couple years back, and now it ain't worth nothing. And it'll come back around in another few years because it always does. So it's like if you don't mind, if you get the stuff cheap enough and you don't mind sitting on things, uh, even if you've set past the profit, a lot of times it'll go back up again in the future. Where are we at now? Do you have a giant Roddy Piper to go with your Hogan on the bottom shelf? No, I just have a uh, Hulk. Um, yeah, I just got Hulk back there. I wish I had that giant Roddy Piper to be honest with you. That'd be cool. What else have we got here? Uh, finding stuff in the attic of Grandma's house, that would be... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, people find stuff in the gra uh, you know, uh, Grandma's attic during COVID. Oh, this is worth a bunch of money now. We can sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you watch somebody... Um, excuse me. I feel like I sneeze. Um, Mr. Throwback, that's his name. Mr. Throwback. He, he's got a ton of followers on Instagram. He's been on Slobby Robbie's show. He's recently put out his own uh, YouTube channel. Um, he's got a big store in New York. So I'm surprised his channel hasn't grown quicker. But uh, check him out, Mr. Throwback. He goes. He shows off his collection of vintage hats. Uh, shark tooth hats, splash hats. You know, I'm talking like Mighty Ducks and stuff. Dead stock with tag stuff that he bought during the pandemic at home. And was paying two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars for these hats. And now they're now they're not worth nowhere near what he paid for them. You guys check out his one of his most recent videos, Mister Throwback. He talks about just this conversation, buying a bunch of that stuff during COVID, and then you know now even trying to break even on it may not even be possible. So, all right. We call that a catch twenty two, yeah. We can hit some. We got some wild stuff going on in the comments. There's some <laughs> stuff between uh, Servi Abel and uh, Ray Ray. I can't keep up on that conversation, but hopefully that answered some questions. But I'll let y'all just uh, have your fun in the chats here. You got Serviable and Imaster are talking to each other in the comments like they like they're best friends now. Like friendships being made, bonds being made right here in the lives, right here in the chats. Love it. Grow the community. We I I've been rubbing my beard a lot. But this this drives me crazy. <laughs> and no, I'm surprised nobody said anything about it. Chris, I think Chris said something about it. Uh, Heartland Bay said something about it a few videos back, and I uh, was like. The t beard game is tough, and it's like, man, I hate it. 
All right, what we got going on here? Who's winning the NBA Finals this year? I'd like to say that the Warriors are going to uh, are going to turn it around and come back, but um, I don't know. There's a lot of tough teams. I don't know. It could go any direction. I, I like I like Boston. Boston's got a good chance as any. What else we got going on here? What's your favorite game, Sergey? Uh, I covered that earlier. Turtles in Time. Turtles Four for the SNES. That's the favorite game. Sean Lear says, appreciate your time, Snow. Love the Q&A. Hey, thanks for coming. Thanks for the questions. Um, that's why I do it. You guys, uh, you guys keep me, uh, keep me on my toes. <laughs> Plenty of good questions. A lot of people in the comments tonight. Okay. Snow, can you pick up shoes from Ray Ray and get them to Serviable? Uh, I am currently detained for the next several days. I will be uh, kind of busy, so you're gonna have to you got 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 to make uh, make arrangements to pick up those shoes. I don't do deliveries. What do we got here? Toads, hunts, and tricks. Toads, hunts, and tricks. I'm not sure what that means, but that's cool. Oh, Servia, Servia Abel is my cousin. Oh, okay, that's cool. Chris Spade says, "Yep." Yeah, beard game sucks, Chris. That's a... What what has happened is is I put on some weight. Actually, I put on quite a bit. Uh, besides turtles, let's say your favorite PS One game. My uh, favorite PS One game would be you know, Twisted Metal Two. That's tough. I didn't want to say that because <laughs> PS One goes between. It's like it tumbles between Grand Theft Auto One and Two and Grand Th and then. Twisted Metal 1 and 2. Th those are PlayStation 1's games that I deal with. Uh, let's see. What's your... Uh, besides Turtles, what's your favorite? Okay, that's PS1. Willis Ritchie, which turtle is your favorite? Uh, Michelangelo is my favorite turtle. Um, but my favorite character is Casey Jones. So. Um, let's see here. I enjoyed the Goodwill picks. That Jurassic Park jacket was a sick find. Yeah, it's not very often you drop $85 in a Goodwill for a jacket, but... Yeah, there was just no leaving that behind. Uh, and then the fact that we were going to the car museum right after that and it was going to be next to Jurassic Park vehicles, it just it was a no-brainer. Uh, yeah, we found that in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. That's where some of those videos were from. Uh, the Jurassic Park jacket, the uh, Kit Fisto mask, the uh, Helly Hansen jacket, the um, North Face backpack. All that was from when me and Kat went to Lexington and we went sourcing between... Uh, waiting for the horror con to open up so yeah that was really cool um you ever get into the nike sb scene i uh, know i don't do sbs uh, my buddy tyler that's he swears by sbs i mean i love the sbs, SBs. i i don't do the sbs uh, i'm not I, I don't do dunks either uh I like a lot of the colorways and I tolerate the highs, but yeah, I'm not an SB person. I would, I would, I know enough about to keep an idea out for like the Freddy Krueger ones and keep an eye out for like the, the Tiffany's because I know they're worth money, but I don't pick them up on a regular either. Uh, what else we got here? Minion. Minion. That was the, uh, he was playable in Twisted Metal 2, the tank at the, uh, Amazon fire ring thing if i remember correctly minion but yeah the dark side was my favorite character but that he didn't come along as playable until uh black it was she i have to say she rather uh you sell the jacket or is it going in the collection which jacket oh the jurassic park jacket uh miss cat wore it uh, it's a little too big for her uh so we are selling it it's on ebay right now and it's on um uh our poshmark so link in the description of our most recent video, eBay, Poshmark, if you're interested in that Jurassic Park jacket, and Miss Cat wore it on her actual body. <laughs> okay, what else we got here? Uh, Chris Pace said, I love Twisted Metal. I like the semi-vehicle. Yeah, uh, Twisted Metal. Um, Twisted Metal 1, my favorite character was, that, was Spectre. He was, drivability, he was the best character to drive. And then uh, Part 2, um... Probably Roadkill. I like Roadkill quite a bit in part two. Okay, let's see here. Uh, 
Willis Ritchie says, have you played the new Turtles game, Shredder's Revenge? Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Me and Miss Cat bought that, and uh, I played it straight through and beat it with um, Michelangelo so I could unlock Casey Jones. And then I beat it straight through with Casey Jones. And then, then me and Miss Cat beat it together straight through with Casey Jones and April. And now I'm currently try beating it with uh, Shredder. Because I think if you beat it straight through with everybody, I think you unlock Yos Yosagi Yojimbo. So, yeah. We play Shredder's Revenge and I have killed it. Killed it. Absolutely killed it. Okay. What else we got here? Sean, the, tw the Twisted Metal Show was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Oh, yeah. Me and Kat got Peacock specifically to watch that show. And then we kept Peacock because we liked that show so well that we're waiting for the next season to come out. It was it, I was wondering how they was going to do it, how they was going to fit it into the real world. They took some liberties with it, but it, it flowed together perfectly and we're... We're highly anticipating the next season, and then it, then it worked out for us because we we're like, well, we're going to keep Peacock now because we know they're going to bring that back. So what are we going to watch on Peacock now? Well, lo and behold, we found The Office is streaming on there, and me and Cat got introduced to The Office, so we ended up binge watching all of that too. <laughs> uh, so we, yeah, we're dedicated Office fans now too. What else we got? Serbia says I like uh, Spectre too. Yep. Shadow, Shadow was good. Mr. Grimm. Axel. So I I beat the game with every character, both uh, all the way up through four and Twisted Metal Black, and I didn't beat Small Brawl, but all, every Twisted Metal game aside from Small Brawl, I beat up until Twisted Metal Black, uh, with every character because the end stories. I wanted to see what the end stories were going to be and the, the twist that always come with it. You know, Calypso's twist. So, yeah. Seventeen people in here. We've had nineteen, twenty. I can't believe that many people have stuck around for these boring conversations about video games. But yeah, Twisted Metal was definitely the way to go. And uh, even Miss Cat's a Twisted Metal fan now, especially after watching uh, the TV series. Um, if you underrated game, uh, Rogue Trip twenty fifteen. I think that's the name of it. That's a really good uh, car combat game. That's what they're called, car combat. Vigilante Eight. I played. I played Vigilante 8 like crazy on N64. And Vigilante 8 to me had the upper hand on Twisted Metal simply for one reason. Because you could use the semi-truck character in that game. That's what made it good. He, Convoy was his name in that game. Because in the original Twisted Metals, you wanted to play as Darkseid. Actually, I think you could play as Darkseid in Twisted Metal 1 after you unlocked him, but he wasn't as good. Uh, but you could start out playing as a semi-truck character in Vigilante 8 and Vigilante 8 Second Offense. So, yeah, those were really good. Grim and Axel were trash, yeah. Uh, Black is the last. Yeah, Twisted Metal Black. That was good. Uh, Spy Hunter OG. I never played Spy Hunter, so that wasn't a game I wasn't too familiar with. I didn't play game. I, I wasn't a lot for the RPGs. There was a few that I played, but there wasn't too many... Uh, so then the PlayStation 1 was known for its, a lot of its RPGs. Uh, yeah. And PlayStation 2, even. When it comes to PlayStation 2, I was during that phase. It was uh, Mortal Kombat, Twisted Metal. Uh, yeah, that was about it. Those are, those are most of the games I played. Mortal Kombat, Twisted Metal games <laughs> for the PlayStation 2. And NBA Street, and NBA Street Volume 2, and NBA Ballers, and Ballers Phenom. That was the era I was going through then, you know, around the PlayStation 2 era. And then uh, Grand Theft Autos. Oh, Spy Hunter's not an RPG? I see. I don't even know. Well, the comments have died on me, but we're down to the last 11 minutes. So you guys make... Oh, no, we're down to the... Oh, this is it. This is the final minute. I don't know what I was thinking. I was going to go for 130 minutes. It's 120. Okay, make sure you get your final questions in. It's been two hours, and I got to end this as I got to get the boy home from the babysitter, and I haven't had dinner yet. So, the Star 8-Bit theme song. I don't know what that is. Look it up. Okay, I'll have to check into that. Last-minute questions. You got about 30 seconds here. I lost track of time with you guys. I love it when that happens. Had 14 people in here. 
uh, you need we need an extra screen so you can look say well I got my tablet right here I could have probably swapped over and looked it up but I actually I lost track of time so uh, it's been great kicking it with everybody tonight you know, certainly made these two hours pass by for me uh, he says way to go now thanks for opening it up yourself open yourself up at your house oh yeah we love to do these lives I just wish Miss Cat could have been here well she was here for a few minutes but um, yeah I'm gonna get out of here and uh, get something to eat and get the get the little boy back from the babysitter and wait for Miss Cat to get home so he said he found Oregon Trail and it was lit oh yeah we did we died lots of times in Oregon Trail but yeah, um, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next live, and um, make sure you guys tune in Saturday for our newest video. Make sure everybody goes and just, as soon as you guys see it drop, everybody just blow in there all at once, and everybody just throw a like and a comment on it. See if we can get it to go, see if we can tickle that algorithm a little bit, because this week's video is really good. I'm really surprised at how good the video is going to, how good it's turning out. I've forgotten about how much footage I had had stored away, and how much good stuff I got stored away, so the next four or five videos is going to be banger after banger after banger. Yeah, dysentery. Yep. Uh, yeah. He died dysentery on the um, Oregon Trail. So we will catch you guys probably next week on a live. And uh, hope you guys enjoy the video come Saturday. And if you ain't doing nothing after this, go over and check out Keith uh, Vintage Sports Flips, his channel. Or check out Heck and Steve. He was in the comments. Or, uh, yeah. So that's it. I will catch you guys on the next one.